We're mad. We got to do jazz hands. We're live. Big Daddy Gun Studios. This is the Who Moves My Freedom podcast. I hope you got your big girl panties on. We're talking politics. Yes, we're talking about gun control. Absolutely. That's what we're doing. You know, like it or not. Here we go. We're going to have this discussion. Who will stand up against gun control and who will remain silent as we lose our Second Amendment rights? This is episode 74 of the Who Moves My Freedom podcast. And I've got Babyface P in the building. What's up? There you go. Babyface is a little fired up. You might not be able to tell from his face <laughs> right now. This is his angry face. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I've already... I've already sent out tweets. I uh, yeah. I didn't have the time to call, but I, yeah. I've already re-enlisted my Twitter, which I haven't used in like two years. Yeah, he's a machine. He's a machine right now. He's <laughs> doing stuff. We've also got my friend Kevin, Kevinus Dixius Maximus. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I, you know what? That doesn't sound right. <laughs> yeah, you know what? <laughs> Wait Hank, a second. <laughs> sorry, man. You're having a moment of honesty today. I'll like you. I'll like you. <laughs> Let me, I, I totally retract that. <laughs> no, we got Kevin, we, we've got Kevin Dixie hanging out with us. I didn't fully think that through, Kevin. No, that's all right, man. Yeah. I, you know, but, I'll take the compliment where I can no, get it. Now, now it's public. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. All right. So we're live. We're here. There's um, lots of stuff going on in the news uh, in regards to gun control. This is my second time coming live on air tonight. I want to say what's up to everyone who joined me in the previous video. If you did it after this, you, hopefully you'll get a chance to uh, watch it. And um, I'm going to shout out everyone that's in the chat in a second here. I want to remind everyone, please hit the thumbs up button right now. Hit the thumbs up. Let's get this all charged up. Get more people coming in. Hit the thumbs up buttons. Make sure you share this on your social media. I want to remind you guys, babyface, you know, you've got the Twitter now, so you can share this on the Twitters. You know, Kevin, you can also share this. Lola, do some sharing. You know, I haven't gotten I haven't even gotten a chance to share it. So I'm gonna rely on you guys today to share this, get it out there. We're gonna get deep into this conversation. Um, right up here at the top, I want to thank everyone for joining us. I want to thank Kevin, thank Patrick. Also, I want to thank the people that support us on Patreon. There's lots of craziness going on right now. So more than ever, we need the support of the people on Patreon. We are Patreon slash Hank Strange. So, and uh, you know what? Make sure you are subscribed to Hank Strange situation. If you're not subscribed, make sure that you do that right now. And the Tyvin Show, what's up at the Tyvin Show? He was first in the chat today, the Tyvin Show. I have no idea where he at, where he's at. He's probably on the road. So the Tyvin Show, Chris B, what's up, Chris B? Rod Mills, those were the first guys in here. Tango Hunter, of course, he says lubricious. That's the code word. <laughs> Um, the Archangel is also in the building. Uh, let me see. I'm scrolling through. Shut up and play a guitar. He's also here. And going down, going down. Let's see who else is here. I'm trying. I'm looking for the new names. Joe Carpenter. He's also in here. What's up, Joe Carpenter? Liberty Life is in the building. Um, Ryan Cosia. Oh, Kochia? I don't know if I'm saying it right or wrong or whatever. Forgive me if I uh, probably said it totally butchered that, Ryan. But Ryan's here. What's up? Jay Fleming is also here. MJ Woodland, Matthew May, Timothy Santo, Mike Bryant, Eli Jimenez. What's up? Uh, B. Larry Shard, too, I want to say. I, I hope I'm. <laughs> These names are not getting easier. They're not getting easier. So, um, E Rock, he says, E Rock says, uh, Tupac forever. <laughs> okay. Uh, Biggie Smalls, yo. I'm, 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 I'm all the way down with Biggie Smalls, but I do like, I do like Tupac. So, there you go. Um, Sergeant Hulk as Big Toe says, Molin Labe. What's up? Um, Eli Jimenez has found the pistol button or the, the code for putting up pistols in a chat. <laughs> so that's really cool because I don't know how to do that. He's got to be on his phone. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's probably on his phone and he specially has that. So Liberty Life says, what's up? Okay, E Rock says Biggie too. Okay, so now we're all balanced out. Chris Bolas is here. He says, what's up? 
Um, Mike Bryan says, judiciously lubricious. Uh, we also have Humvee, Nick. So there you go. What's up to everyone who's in here? Make sure you guys click the thumbs up button right now and then share this video on whatever social media you have. I know, I know you have social media. Share it. I implore you. Now is the time to share more than ever. Um, LB Louis Cipher. You know, and he says, what's up? A pair of SIG P250s. Okay. <laughs> He just bought us a pair of SIG 250s. Actually, I don't know what he – yeah, that's he probably got a good deal. And the thing about that is you could – is now with the 320s, you can, you know, you can swap out the, stuff. The old, oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. The only thing is is that if he bought the 250s, then he probably got – he has the old rails that go along with that. But you can get, you know – you're going to probably have to buy 320s, you know, P320s in order to get the, the new nice trigger. Now shut up and play your guitars. Put 20 million pistols in here. And actually, okay, there you go. I just, I just got it. Up. <laughs> I got it for you, Hank. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Shut I, got a, up. I got a SIG. Here we go. Here's a P220. Uh, yeah. 45. Yeah. The Tyvon show is getting frisky. Tony London says, greetings to everyone. Um, Eli Jimenez says Andre 3000D. <laughs> okay. Shut up says Eminem. You know, Tyvon Schill says shit on Glock. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. Um, yeah. And then uh, Chris B says, uh, fuck Eminem. He's always been a douche. Yes, Eminem is a douche. <laughs> so there you go. So I totally agree. Totally agree with that. Okay, so this you saw, is, the, you saw his his like epic rap diss today, right? Um, no, I know that he cursed out any of his supporters that that uh, voted for Trump or whatever. No, he he put out like a like a rap track today about Trump. That's why that's why he's being brought up. Oh, really? Yeah. So what does he think? Like, oh, he hates. Of course, know, he hates Trump's Trump. gonna holler back or something. I mean, <laughs> the best know, thing I saw was somebody Trump somebody deal. photoshopped a a Trump huh? that had like uh, had Eminem lyrics in it mi mixed with like Trump things. It was yeah. really funny. <laughs> what did you say, Kevin? Uh, Trump is the one dude that probably would respond. You yeah, know, I'd like, like to see that shit. <laughs> yeah, it's um, I, it's I was be... he did it. He did it for the BET cipher, so it was like a freestyle. I think oh, uh, that's what it was. There you go. Oh, I think okay. uh, for me, it's uh, and I, I listen to it. I'm I'm a fan of hip hop, and I listen to it, and I like him. And um, and um, what he had to say wasn't all correct, and and that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. Like we can't put a hundred percent, and I think that's a problem that's going on in general. We are constantly putting a hundred percent of everything into one thing or the other. So you know, I don't necessarily think every single bitty thing that Trump do is right or does is right. I also don't believe uh, everything he does is wrong. But Eminem, in my opinion, made some very good points today. But I, I think now our country, man, we're, we're so torn up. It's like either you're 100% this way or 100% that way. So I think it was okay. great. I think it was creative. Um, I think it was an American expressing his points, his viewpoints. Um, I think he does it in a very creative way. Um, now, if you agree or disagree with what he had to say, I think a big lesson what we're going to talk about today is what happens when you put 100% of your trust in the politicians. And you you choose sides and stand either a thousand percent with them. If somebody says one thing bad about them, all of a sudden they suck. So the vision is rampant. Um, and I'm not saying because you think M's a douche that you're you're being divided. That's more of an opinion about how you feel about him lyrically as a musician uh, and maybe some things that he does. But everything he had to say about Trump wasn't false. It just wasn't. Um, and we're going to learn today about why you don't put a thousand percent of your trust as a free human being into anybody that has something to gain from you giving them your power. You just don't. Yeah, um, I would agree with you on that. I think you shouldn't be dogmatic to anyone or anything. Um, that's a principle I try to live my life, you know, my life by. So um, what what exactly, I didn't, I don't watch BET. I don't, to be honest with you, I could give two shits about BET or awards I, I, or um, whatever. Some of his, some of his points, I, I listened to it, in all fairness, I listened to it once, and it was on, um, it was like a clip on Facebook. Okay. I listened to it. Um, mm -hmm. And what he basically, what he basically was saying is nothing you haven't heard before in his musical way, uh, but he was saying that um, it's, uh, it's he, he brought up how Trump is bullying the NFL, which he is, <laughs> whether you agree with it or not, he is. 
Yeah. He brought up how he's bullying the NFL. He brought up a very good point where I think a lot of people are sensitive to talk about. Um, but he mentioned how um, those athletes, and I think one thing that I find very insensitive of people. Now I'm not. I'm look me personally. I stand for the anthem. That's my mm-hmm. that's my viewpoint, right? Exactly. Uh, but when you have people that are telling you that this is how they feel about a thing and they are going to kneel, they're going to use their platform. We can have that discussion. Uh, but he did bring up the, the end all goal being uh, people telling these athletes that they're a bunch of spoiled brats and that they're millionaires. And so clearly the equality is uh, alive and well in America and racism doesn't exist. And you don't you don't tell these guys who are representing entire cultures uh, that because you are successful and how many what percentage of people that play football, forget the color, even make it to the pros. What is it like one percent or less than one percent? So uh, to tell these people that they don't have a they don't get to have a voice and they don't get to say how they feel. Um, and when they made it clear that they're not disrespecting the anthem, they have a point. They just know the anthem is going to get your attention. I think for you to call them a bunch of big babies and SOBs as a president of the United States. Now, you might have that as locker room talk. Don't get me wrong. But as president of the United States, I think was distasteful. Eminem brought that up. Uh, he also brought um, up how it was. Okay. Um, Let's can I, I I'm not trying to um, I'm not trying to. You know, actually, go ahead. Hit all your points, because I want to I want to I want to <laughs> let you get your get your thing out here. But I think I want to come back to some of those things, obviously. Go ahead. No, you can come back to them now. Come on. Let's roll. Yeah. So we're talking about the um, we're talking about these these guys in the NFL. And we're saying that the guys in the NFL can, you know, I'm not discussing people, you know, a kid who's in high school or who's in college and -hmm. doesn't make any money. We're talking about guys in the NFL. If you're in there, you're successful and you're successful in America, regardless Mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, what your racial background is. And what you're saying and what I guess Eminem is saying there is that they could talk all the shit they want to. They could say whatever they want to. Eminem could be distasteful and say whatever he wants to, but somehow magically the president can't say what he wants to. I think that's bullshit. And I understand what you're saying that the president is maybe supposed to like have some kind of higher standard. I really think that's bullshit. Then you're saying there's like one rule for this person and another rule for that person. And I think we should just get over that. I think at this point in life, in the world, we should get over that. And we shouldn't say that, oh, you're president, you can't say shit, but I'm a rapper or I'm a comedian and I can say whatever the hell I want to. Bullshit. Christ. I'm not sorry. This wasn't you guys. Chat is He's making my <laughs> making me work hard tonight. <laughs> I have to prove all these. So, the go, so I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying there, Kevin. Um, no, I, I, I get what you're saying, and where we disagree is this. Forget who's in office. I expect my president to be presidential, period. I don't care who's sitting up there. I expect you to be presidential. Now, has have presidents throughout history said slick shit out their mouth? Yeah. All right. Everybody's been caught. Now, recently, you get catch people with, you know, cell phones and all kind of stuff. Politician in general. I am not upset that Trump has an opinion, okay? He's a human being. He can have an opinion. I'm not upset about that at all. What I'm upset about is when you are using your office to bully people. And that's well, exactly so, what So what is Trump do? Who is he bullying? Come on, man. Are we, are we going to pretend you're, Trump, you're trying to say that these that dudes and the, these, these We dudes can't pretend that Trump has not been directly influential in even how those owners are responding to their players. Now, Am I going to knock him for having that kind of influence? No, he's a powerful, successful man. He built himself up to that regard. I'm not knocking him. Yeah, but here's the thing: like, what? Like, everyone now is going to say that they're bullied, and so I find it hard to believe that some big ass dudes who run into other guys and knock them down and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you can yeah. figure out when it comes to money. Yeah, I can. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I don't think those guys are getting bullied, and I think the NFL is doing whatever they want to. And um, there's lots of other things that we could talk about, the president being presidential and all that kind of stuff. There's lots of presidents that weren't presidential. I mean, was uh, was Bill Clinton being presidential when he did his shit? No, no, no. So what bill what 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 bill wasn't bill signing while he was getting his bill handled under the table right so yeah. clearly he wasn't doing so, something yeah so let's i think we should just get over that it's just like i don't think that you know we should come down on people for taking steroids i think we should just have a fucking mutant league and get it over with if dudes <laughs> are taking steroids and doing all this craziness 
you know, let's just let's just stop pretending. And I think it's the same thing with the presidents. It doesn't matter if, a, you know, you're saying that Trump's bullying these NFL players. So what the fuck was Obama doing when he was signing, um, you know, when he was just signing executive orders and forcing us to do shit? Being you know? a bully. Yeah. Exactly. Same so, shit. Okay. Being a bully. But where, the, where were those guys? I didn't see any of those guys taking a knee. And at this point, you know, I'm not telling them, I don't want to tell them where to take a knee and what to do this or whatever. But if they're going to do all of that, then I think someone should talk up about it. And if the president talks up about it, I don't know why it becomes bullying. They didn't lose any money. There's no one that got kicked out of anything. <laughs> maybe the people who decided not to support the NFL because of their bullshit, you know, maybe th those are some little losses. But I don't really think we've got any of that going on. You know? it, it, still, it still shows a sign of what his country is. Yeah, I think those guys were totally fine. I'm pretty sure they went home and uh, beat the shit out of their wives, and that was totally able to go down. And, and, and I'm they sure might... they went and did all the other crap that they usually do, right? I'm sure they went and snorted coke and did this thing and that thing. Well, and, let me let me add the shit that they usually up, do. It brings up a bigger problem in this country though, because now we're getting into semantics. So let me ask you, a, let me ask you a straightforward question. Mm -hmm. Next Monday, for example, if I'm on the schedule to come on the show, am I still coming on the show? Sure. OK, so here's the point I'm trying to bring up. Conversations like this in this country aren't represented a lot. When you have the the players doing whatever they're doing. And remember, my point is not whether you disagree. Clearly, mm -hmm. if I say I stand, I'm not agreeing with what they're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. But they do have a voice and they are Americans. They can do as they choose. As long as they're not absolutely setting the flag on fire, spitting on a flag or something like that. I don't have beef with them. Now, as they are doing that. The NFL, and here's another part where I think society- They, they can also do that if that's what they want to do. The thing is, is that we have the right to go, that's bullshit what you're doing. That's disrespectful. And, and I, I agree with that, but hold on. Yeah. Here's the problem with, here's the problem in general, even when we get to this gun control thing we're going to talk about. Here's the problem with this country in general. People aren't collectively, aren't capable of having a discussion without immediately trying to press somebody's back against the wall. For example, I agree that the players should be able to need whoever I am. I believe that the NFL has not given Colin Kaepernick a job, and I believe that they are going to somewhat make it a rule now that players must stand for the anthem. That's what I, as whomever I am, agree to. So I'm not watching the NFL. On the flip side of it, I'm a guy that thinks they better stand their butts up and that they better, they better um, be respectful of the flag. And if they don't, then I'm not going to watch it. So you have to literally go down to the money and, and make a decision right then and there about who you're going to represent and who you're going to support. And that's the problem because open dialogue seems to be dead in this country. You can't have it. That's what I mean by either you're a thousand percent over here or you're a thousand percent over there. And that's it. Yeah, listen, I agree with you. And I think I think I, I'm actually happy. The reason why I have you on the show, for example, is because I know you're going to speak your mind and we don't always agree on things. And I think that's great because uh, I think, uh, you know, people need to have this conversation and there's too much of other people out there controlling the conversation. So, for example, with Eminem, you know, I've always been a fan of Eminem. I was a fan of Eminem way back when he first came out. And, and um, a lot of black people were like, why the hell are you a fan of some white rapper? Right. Because I don't I don't see the world that way. And what I'm trying to say to you is that I don't see NFL players who are making a million dollars and up a year as some poor kids on the field who are getting bullied. Now, I'm not saying that they can't do what they want to do. They can absolutely do what they want to do. And then the rest of us can also do what we want to do. And to have like two sets of things, I, I had this argument with someone already where they said, yeah, the president can't act like this, but I can. This, my favorite rapper can act like this, you know, and I can act like this, but this person can't act like that. And that's, we have to get over that. That's saying that there's two different sets of rules. Let's just stop that nonsense and stop pretending and even stop having uh, – let's just let people be who the hell they are. Okay, you know? so let me, ask you, let me ask you this question. One of the big arguments, whether you agree or disagree with it, one of the big arguments was let's keep politics out of sports. Remember that whole argument? Go out there, play sports. We don't want to hear your opinion. Play sports. That's what, we're, that's what we bought tickets for. That's what we want to watch. So if, if we're having that discussion, if they're just supposed to play sports, which, by the way, segue – those individuals, no different than you or me, if you hit the lottery tomorrow and won $20 million, you are still going to speak up for gun rights, right? Absolutely. Because you're, you're passionate about it. Matter of fact, now you got the money to do something about it, right? In different ways. Yeah, so, absolutely. Speaking up for gun rights is making me broke. <laughs> right? I'm still doing it. So, so why wouldn't I do it if I was rich?
Exactly. But you guys, so those guys that see that they have a point. And that's because they're rich or they got money doesn't mean they're not going to speak up to that. Point. Yeah, I'm not saying they don't have a point. I'm not. What, what I'm trying to tell you is, is that they can they, they have lots of opportunities. They're football players. OK, mm -hmm. when, when if they have things to say off the field um, or even on the field, for that matter, people will listen to what they have to say. But this is just a structure that we have here in America. Right. Where, you know, they're, you're playing the anthem. The flag is there. So yeah. we, we have dudes who, who um, you know, would, let's say, go to another country and, and, and be respectful of that country's stuff and then disrespect America's, right? I think we had that same thing going on with these NFL guys, right? Then what happened but, in um, the game in Europe? In England, yeah. yeah. They stood up for the queen and they were all disrespect. They were all respectful for um, the, the, um, the British national anthem. But then when, you know, when our thing was like, oh, we're going to, you know, we're going to disrespect that. And now on that particular, I'm sorry, I'm gonna cut you off. On that particular thing, that whole that 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 issue, that was jacked up, and that was jacked up from a whole different level. Now, if you're not gonna yeah. stand for one and respect uh, respect one in the way we think you should, now I will call out that game over in Europe. That was a joke. Yeah. Because you you don't. Yeah. Who did we? Where did the country come from? Where were, who were we running from? Right. <laughs> we're trying to be free of the queens and princes and <laughs> so, shit like that. You know, like, you think those guys, do you remember, do you remember when, do you remember when one of those princes uh, married a black chick? You remember that? Do you remember? No, I'm not, not hip to that. You, you, no, you don't ever remember that happened. Do you remember when in England they had a black prime minister? Remember when that no. happened? No. No, because it never happened. So what the hell are you talking about? You think if you talk to black people in England that they'll say everything is awesome? I've no. lived in England, okay? There's racism everywhere on the face of this planet. I've lived in Europe and I've lived in Africa. There's racism in Europe and there's racism in Africa from Africans. Mm -hmm. All right. So the thing is, is that, you know, I don't what I'm saying to you is I don't feel sorry for these NFL guys. And we're you know, I'd like to see the um, these NFL guys take a knee maybe for the wives who they beat the, beat the shit out of in an elevator. How about how about protesting that shit? Hey, I, I like so let me let me recap for people that might have came in on this late because uh, I'm pretty sure we got some people in the chat late. So let me recap off of your last point. Hey, me, I stand. Let's get that clear Two. What my point is, the people that choose that they are going to not disrespect the flag because that isn't what it now for everybody that doesn't know the idea to kneel at the flag instead of sit came from a Navy SEAL. OK, that was a conversation he had with it. So I'm just I'm just giving you perspective. That's oh, a conversation he right. had with a SEAL. Yeah. The SEAL said that the military wouldn't feel disrespected by that. And I know he doesn't speak for everybody. I'm not saying he does. I'm just telling you where the guy got the idea from. So they decide to go out and make a protest to get attention for something that they feel passionate about. I think that that is American as American gets, right? Whether you like it or not. Protest is not supposed to be a nice thing. It's supposed to get attention. Now, me personally, if I go to the game, am I gonna stand and salute the flag? Yes. Do I believe what they did over in Europe by any stretch of the imagination was cool? No, that was flat out wrong. You don't, you don't, you don't even hint at what could be perceived as disrespect to the country that affords you those opportunities and then pay homage and honor to the one that they could would strip you of every right you have and put you back into servitude today. Yeah, absolutely not. Yeah, absolutely. So and, and, you know, and, I'm going to cap that off. And yeah. No, and that's not the thing. Like, I think how we got into this thread of this um, thread of conversation that we're having here is we're talking about Eminem and his cipher or whatever. I have not heard it. Even if I played it here, you guys wouldn't hear it because I've got my system set up that way, so you wouldn't hear it. If one of you guys want to pull it up, I'm fine with that. But the thing that I'm saying is that for Eminem, who is an artist that has accomplished everything he has, including his bank account, based on free speech and him being able to say whatever he wants to and him being you know, incredibly distasteful, which, hey, I'm a fan. I appreciate that. To get up there and say that, oh, well, the president can't be this. This is the world we live in, dude. You know, this is the world we live in. You created it. You can't say that it's it's OK for me to make money doing this. But the guy who's president, he can't say that. I'm sorry. I know that people in America want to have this thing like, oh, you know, we got to hold the. Pre stop that. We have to stop that. That's why we're losing all these fights, because you have Democrats are willing to play dirty and Republicans are trying to play some kind of fucking Boy Scout or something and getting their asses kicked. You mm -hmm. know, and we have to stop playing like that. It, it's it's all's fair in love and war, okay? It's it, you you have the same rules for everyone. 
You can't say that you could do what you want to do, but the president can't do it because that's bullshit. Because guess what, man? You you were born here, right? You were born in America. Yes, I was. That means you can be the president. Anyone in America could be the president. Now, I can't. But anyone could be the president. Eminem could be the president. Anyone could be the president as long as they, they, they fall into the rules and qualify to be the president. And now and we're trying to handicap them and say what they can and what they can't say. And in this specific issue, I would like to see the thing that says the president can't call these people's asses out. No, let, look, my thing is, that's my personal opinion about what I feel. Any let's make it clear. Trump is yeah. not the only president to talk out the side of his neck. Period. Right. Right. He's not. The problem is he is in a day he has a, a, a very unique persona and he is in a day and age where we got social media and all this stuff. So it's just getting out a lot faster. Yeah. What I will I will say is this. If we're going to have an honest discussion as a country in general, one one argument was keep politics out of the game of football, play football, basketball, soccer, whatever I, the hell I'm buying a ticket to come see. Period. Right. On the other side of it, we were saying um, Trump still should be able to say what he wants to say. If you're president, a congressman, a senator, if you say something about an issue, it becomes political by proxy. It just does. Right. Yeah. So we can't you telling the players to keep politics out of the game, but yet the politicians are bringing politics into the game. So I think both of them, you know, ought to just deal with whatever they're dealing with. But I don't think that it should be. I don't like Trump getting all this attention for one, because I don't believe any one man should have that much. Look at what's happening even outside of football. Look at the country in general. Every time somebody says something racist, they bring Trump's name up now, right? And my whole thing is, A, I personally don't feel, uh, feel the man is racist. I think he's a rich white dude that talks like a rich white dude is how I feel, right? Now, it's when they when they are coming out saying, oh, racism is this, look at Trump, look at Trump. You are giving one man too much power. So even, let's say flat out, Donald Trump came out tomorrow and said, I'm a racist, I hate all these people, period. I, I hate you. You're deplorable to me. Flat out. It's not a guess. I'm telling you in your face. I hate you. Why are you giving? I know he's president. I get that. Why are you giving him that much power and dominion over your life? And I'm talking to people that are letting one man influence him that much. Why are you giving any individual that much power and dominion over your life? Affected by it? Yes. Learning from it? Yes. Fighting against it? Sure. But why are you giving one person that much control over you to where you're going to let society fall in your eyes? Because, oh, my God, this man, because he's still a man, this man feels this way. And I feel that way about anybody. Yeah, but you know what? But you know what the thing is, Kevin? I, I understand the point that you're trying to make there. The funny thing is, is that we have no evidence. There's nothing that we can bring up here to say that we can say a lot of things about Trump. I don't agree with Trump. I think this gun control situation that we're I don't agree with him on everything. And this gun control situation that we're in, he's the one who cracked the door open. He's the one that allowed this to start up in the first place. So I'm I'm 100% ready here to call him on that, and that's you know going to be a big point of the show. That was a point of the live hangout that I did before to call Trump and anyone else on it. But to say that he's a racist, I think that's first of all, I grew up in New York City. I've known about Trump since I was probably like about you know um, 11, 12 years old. Never saw anything in all that time that Trump did that we could say that he's a racist. We could say a lot of things about him. No. Um, the, the I've I've met him and I met people in his family. There's nothing there that we can look at to say that he's a racist. So so first of all, these football players don't even know what the fuck they're talking about. They're just automatically because he's white, he's racist. But because Obama was black, he wasn't racist. That's bullshit. That that kind of that kind of thinking is what I'm trying to say we need to stop doing. We need to stop assuming that because this guy's white and he's president, he doesn't agree with you, that he's a racist. That's the bullshit that Eminem is doing. Eminem is just a poor, like, white trash kid <laughs> from the wrong side of the tracks. He's not some kind of genius. He has talent. You know, maybe he's a musical genius or a rap genius or something like that, but he's not a political genius. He doesn't really know what the fuck he's talking about because we could easily say that his ass is racist by the same things that he's trying to put on Trump. That's a completely different issue. We cannot put racism on Trump at this point. There's just too much. Wasn't the first apprentice that he chose a black chick? Yep. Okay. So what the hell? That's like a, that's a conversation that's not even worth having. Well, that's what I'm saying. That that's my that's my whole point, and you you just reiterated my point for me. Right. You shouldn't ever. That's why I say even if because I've never heard him, and people accuse me of not listening close enough or being biased or whatever. But I've never heard. Now I've heard some silly crap come out of his mouth, but I've never heard anything I can say flat out that that's racist. Yeah. I haven't heard him say anything that I haven't heard 
guys, you know, working on cars, say. So I, I don't, I don't process things that way. Yeah, but what, what I, and what I'm what, trying, what, what I'm trying to say to you is, furthermore, with these NFL players, where were these guys when there's other NFL players beating the shit? Like when, when you look at, I, I'm not into sports, man. I don't really know anything about football. I, I could care less about it. But we all know, we all saw a guy in the NFL beat the shit, knock his wife unconscious in an elevator. Where the right. fuck were those guys when that happened? How many times did they take a knee over that? Just tell me. Because if they didn't, then they should shut the hell up. And if, and if they're going to stand by and let that happen and not get out there and say anything about it, and then they're going to decide to go out there and disrespect the country, that, that's not, when they're taking a knee, they're not disrespecting Trump. That's the entire country. That's the flag, the anthem of the country that allows them to have the things that they have. And if they really believe that there's institutional racism, I, could, I lived in places where there's institutional racism. There's institutional racism in places like Africa. And you can, you can go there and you can, you can have whatever you want and they could come take it from you. So if there was institutional racism in America, what would happen is some white guy would roll up on them at their mansion and when they're getting out of their Rolls Royce or whatever and go, hey, you're a black dude, you can't have this I'm gonna have this now and none of us could say that when, when when did a white guy come take your house from you or your cars or tell you you can't have your job that's yeah. institutional racism there that does not exist in America is there racism hell yes that's because of us because of human beings and they themselves do just as much damage if not more than the people they don't I don't even think these people know what they're talking about I don't even think Eminem knows what he's talking about. Eminem is on a rap label that's owned by Dr. Dre. You know what Dr. Dre used to do? He used to knock bitches out. Yep. <laughs> so what are we talking about? That's cool, but Trump is a racist and he's a horrible person because where's the people that, that Trump was knocking out? Maybe he was grabbing some people by the stuff or whatever. I think that's a lot better than what we just saw from Harvey Weinstein in um in hollywood right God, yeah that guy <laughs> yeah so that's the thing like i i think eminem and anyone else at the bet awards could say whatever the hell they want to at the same time i think the notion of uh, i think they're just trying to find a straw man to fight and make people get behind their bullshit. i don't see eminem giving up his mansion to anybody i'm not saying that he was and and just for we're, we're clear because i know people are tuning ch chiming in late Hank went on a rant that Kevin did not prompt him to. <laughs> so Kevin never said. If people, if hold on, people hold are on. watching this and they don't know that we're friends, then too bad for that. I have to start cursing people out. All right, let me get this out. Okay. Kevin never said Trump was a racist. Okay. What I said was, even if he came out tomorrow and said flat right. out, "This is who I am," so there's no more. Nobody can speculate. He can right. say one thing or another. Yeah. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, you should never let one man have that much dominion and control over who as an individual you are, right? Yeah. Because if Trump decided tomorrow he quit and he wasn't going to be president anymore, I, I, you know, I'm quit. I with you. I'm going to take my money and walk away. Then we as a country still got to survive. We still got to make it. We still have to get along. We and still dude, have to besides that, out. he's only president. I'm not that's, saying that's, it's not a that's big my deal. Point. He's only the my president. Point. Yeah. He is only a man. We respect the office of president because of the sacrifices. Yeah. But but if he's a man, we have to allow him. We have to allow him to do like do unto others as you have them do unto you. So you can't be out there like, you know, pimp slapping bitches. And then you're out there like what the president just pimp slapped a bitch. No, that can't be. He's <laughs> yeah. the president. We got to hold him to a higher standard. How, how are you going to hold other people to a higher standard than you? That's not the definition of being a man. Well, I think everybody, everybody to a degree is going to have, and, and the NFL players or whatever athlete is not going to be, um, uh, let's see, safe from that. Because if you, if you decide to say, Okay, it's it's not cool to be smacking women, which is not. You shouldn't put your hands on a woman. Uh, it's not cool to be smacking women, but nobody nobody stood up for that. When the guys are getting, let's say, there are men, for instance, that are getting raped, right? When I read that story, I was shocked about the amount of men that get raped. But yet nobody stands up and says anything for the men getting raped. Matter of fact, we call them punks because you should have enjoyed it, right? Especially by when it's by a woman. So <laughs> people always Look, choose. I'm going to avoid going off on a tangent. I'm just on saying, okay. Google it. I couldn't make it no, up. I understand it. what you're saying. Ray, like yeah. we, we always choose what we want to stand up for. My thing is this. I don't care. 
I really personally don't care where Hank Strange stands, where Babyface stands, where Walt stands, where whomever stands, because you have a right to stand. You have a right to say and do whatever you want to. We can debate about your point, your uh, point of view, but you have a right to stand and do what you want to do. What I'm trying to get over the people in general, I don't care if it's Eminem saying it, uh, Kaepernick trying to say what he wants to say, whomever. We should be open to listen to people, hear what they have to say. You can disagree with them. Nobody had to say you had to like what they said. Listen to what they have to say, because the moment you completely shut off your ears to what another American has to say, you could be missing something that could be fixing your country. Because to also say that their point they're trying to make doesn't happen is bullshit. Yeah, okay. I'm going to tell you right now. Hold on. I worked for a police department for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So I'm the first one to tell you some of the shit that they're saying they're kneeling for is true. Flat out. Now, does that mean all cops are bad? No. I've shared blood with these guys. I've fought with these guys. And if I had to go put on a uniform tomorrow, I would do it again. What I'm trying to say is some of the things they're making, some of the points they're trying to make, not every single story, some of the shit is, is really blown up and out of proportion, and I'm with it, right? But there is still a root cause of people being mistreated in this country, and it does happen. So you can't at the same time say, oh, you know what? That never occurs. That never happens because then you're being in, in, in uh and disgenuous. So we have to be open in here and say, hey, you know yeah. what? I, I, you have I, a point. It does happen. I disagree with the way you're bringing it up because I disagree with it. Yeah, I 100% agree truth. with you. I agree with you on that, Kevin. I, I think there are points. and But I think what Americans are saying, not all Americans, because obviously people agree with them and people don't. I think what people are saying, they have lots of ways that they could go about doing these things. They could take their money and instead of buying that extra Rolls Royce or going to the club and the strip club and making it rain extra, like making a thunderstorm at the strip club or whatever, they can put their money into, you know, um, making these places better. Right. Yeah. By helping the right people get elected. This is how we change police departments. The police department don't work for some mysterious person. They don't work for Trump. They don't work for anyone who's the president. They mm -hmm. don't work for a congressman or a senator. They work for you. They work for the mayor of your town. They work for your town. Your taxes mm -hmm. pays them. You can do things to turn these guys around. But taking a knee, that's bullshit. That's the easy way out of it. And by the way, what what about like all the things, for example, in all sports that we have here in America that we hold up? That's mm -hmm. all dudes in there. That's one of the reasons why I don't even like it. I don't want to watch a sport with dudes slapping each other in the ass and rolling around and all that type of shit. How about we see some women out there, something that I would actually enjoy? How about we take the money from their asses and give it to some women so I can actually get some kind of entertainment? Because I really don't want to look at a sausage. There fest. is a lingerie league of football, Hank. Yeah, but how about we get rid of the fucking NFL and, and put those people up and let's watch that all day? And then what about the guy the other day, there was a black football player that a white reporter, female reporter, she got up and asked him a question. Oh, and yeah. He was flabbergasted that a woman dared to ask him a question. What about that bullshit? You're, you're what talking about those injustices that are yeah. going on. Cam Newton, yeah, Cam Newton shut down. He he mocked the female reporter to ask him. Yeah. To how many knees were taken? How many people came out and said this guy's full of shit? That's not how you talk to people. This is 2017. It's damn near 2018. Well, so he's also the same guy that said that he doesn't believe in taking a knee. So I guess what I'm saying you will never agree 100. It's still bullshit. What I'm trying to tell you, it's still bullshit. You know, and that's the thing. Like ultimately. Do not try to hold other people to a higher standard than you would hold yourself to. That's what I'm saying. And so if Eminem is trying to tell you that he could come out and say whatever he wants and be as crass as he wants to be, and he, and, and he can make a fortune out of that, but someone cannot be... Eminem is like just think about the hypocrisy of Eminem saying that someone should be more presidential because that's bullshit. Well, now, you I know? will say this too. There is a difference between subtly, but a difference. The players silently took protest now if trump wanted to come out and have a rap battle or a twit battle i guess that's a thing a twit battle i guess i don't know but if he wanted to come out and have a twit battle or a rampage against somebody who vocally attacked him okay because he, I he think, out can I say something i think uh trump and eminem would have more of a twat battle because i personally you know in lots of ways think they're both twats so there well, you go. That's I, my, I so they, 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 it's easier for them to have a twat battle, in my opinion. And I'm gonna I'm gonna switch off of this All right, as crassly as I possibly can. Okay. I'm gonna make sure there's maximum crassness in how I switch off of this. And the reason why I say it because look, right, the thing we're supposed to be talking about right now is gun control, right? Right. And right now, there's this situation that we're in 
Trump opened this door. And we haven't let Babyface say anything, so I'm going to let Babyface <laughs> answer this question. No, you guys am, I wrong, am I right or wrong, Patrick, that Trump we, opened this door or not? Do you, wait, tr you think Trump opened the door? Why do you say that? I think so. Because, okay, well, obviously the dude in Las Vegas did something. We don't even know what the hell happened in Las Vegas. We don't know what happened. We don't know why this guy did this, but he did something. And he used some kind of device, supposedly, to do this thing, right? Yeah. Now, who was the first person to get out there other than a Democrat, other than a liberal, other than a progressive or a gun grabber, to go out there and say, you know what, we're going to take a look at the gun laws? I have no idea. That was Trump. Trump. That was that was Trump. <laughs> Trump is the one who started that. And then the people who came in and seconded in that was the NRA, believe it or not. That's how we're in this situation today that we have these bills being put forward. Because they said they would take a look at it. Republicans were already wavering, but they weren't saying anything. They were doing all of this behind the scenes. They were really there's a lot of Republicans. I, I, I see Republicans and Democrats as the same damn party. Personally, that's how I look at it. I really don't think there's a difference. It's just that Republicans are getting funding and money from the NRA and other places that are supposed to be conservative. So they're trying to, you know, make it appear like they're down with us, but they're not really. So they were looking for a reason, but they weren't saying anything. Then Trump, then this thing happened and Trump came out and said, okay, we're going to, you know, we're going to take a look at this. We can go back in the news. Trump is the one. I, I remember seeing that, that he said, we're going to do this. And the next thing you know, the NRA comes out and says that the ATF should do something about these bump fire stocks. Now, today, we're facing, you know, we're facing bills coming out from Feinstein. And then even here in Florida, you have uh, representatives in South Florida that are putting forward uh, bills that would literally kill the, the firearms aftermarket. It, it would could, literally it kill. Literally kill off industries. Yeah, you know. So that's the thing. I think uh, this is my opinion. You guys could tell me whatever. I think Trump started this shit because in the first place, what he should have done was come out and say that there's no, there isn't any kind of law that could stop this guy from doing it. There isn't. I mean, tell me the law. If someone could come up with a law right now that would have stopped this guy, murder is illegal, domestic <laughs> terrorism illegal. Shooting people's asses for no reason, illegal. You know, the hotel, it's illegal to even to go into this hotel armed. Right? Yeah, of course. No, I, I totally agree. Yeah. So, so everything this guy did up, was illegal. I put up a tweet the two days ago or yesterday that locks are there to keep honest people honest. Locks are there to keep honest people honest. Because if a criminal wants to get in, they're going to get in. It's the same for laws. Laws yeah. are there to keep legal people from doing something stupid law-abiding citizens from doing something stupid if somebody really wants to do something they're going to go out of their way and do it just look at france i mean if you look at the the charlie hebdo attack there was they had two fully automatic ak's like how much worse can it get france has like zero guns these two guys got in some fully auto ak's i mean it's yeah. a, what other proof do you need that if somebody wants to do something illegal they're going to yeah, and if you look at the the laws that these guys are trying to um, set out, if you really take a look at this stuff, like I'm going to read from this, you guys can go look it up. There's no, e there's not even a number for this thing that um, they, put they, forward. They got one today. It's HR three nine nine nine. Okay, so now it's HR three nine nine. So thirty nine ninety nine. Thirty nine ninety nine yeah. to amend Title eighteen United States Code to prohibit the manufacture, possession, or transfer of any part or combination of parts that is designed and functions to increase the rate of fire of a semi-automatic rifle. It's far but, too vague. That's but your does problem. not convert the semi-automatic rifle to a machine gun. I mean, it's, so, but, it's so vague that it could literally encompass anything and it could be used to prosecute so many, literally like, uh, like uh, what's his name, uh, Max video from yesterday. Literally, if you put a, a pencil next to your trigger to use it as a bump fire or something like that, you could be prosecuted under this. Yeah. Because you're using a part to speed up your firearm. It's it's crazy. And the thing about this is that the slide fire probably the fact that this guy, if this guy genuinely really put slide fire stocks on his thing, I don't know. This whole thing is weird. Because they're saying that this guy got into the firefight with the security guard in the Mandalay Hotel before he opened fire on people. They changed the timeline. So I don't know whether that's accurate, whether they're going to adjust that again and keep changing that around, but that's what they're saying, right? 
I'm uh, I keep I've said it from the beginning. I've totally said it from the beginning, and maybe I'm just a conspiracy theorist, but this the shooting has never added up correctly to me. There's always been doubt of of like what exactly happened because it never really made sense to me. Um, but yeah, no, the, they had the timeline wrong. They came out with a brand new timeline, and uh, the security guard was shot before the shooter started firing upon the crowd, which is crazy. Yeah. And now the, the, so, and that timeline thing is in question because the police shifted the timeline and now the hotel's like, oh no, we're, you know, this timeline, because the hotel obviously is trying to cover their ass. You know why? They're going to get the crap suit out of them. Oh yeah. But think, but think about it. All their things of you can't come into this hotel armed and now they're going through search. What is it? It didn't, I mean, all their rules of the, and, and everything that they had didn't stop anyone. Who are you going to attack? A soft target or a hard target? If you get a, if you can go for yeah, if you can go for a target that you know is going to be armed, or you can go to the house next door that has, uh, that you know is a is a gun free zone. Which one are you going to go to? You're yeah. going to rob the house that has no and guns. The, and the whole concept, like if we're living in America, where okay, it's a horrible thing. It's tragic to wake up in the morning and 58, 59, 60 people died in something, right? And, and hundreds of people were injured. It's happened to us before. There's no law that we've put into effect that's going to stop it from happening again. You can't. There isn't. You can't, yeah, you can't. You know, there's no law that we can put into effect that's going to stop 9-11 from happening again. You can't do it. People no. who want to, to bring destruction on other human beings are going to keep testing the fences. They're going to keep looking for ways. They're going to use other things. They're going to turn to other things. What do we, we're just going to ban everything now. You know, we're just going to say like, you know what? You can't even be born. These I people keep, are totally I keep fine saying with it. You go to what the, what the British have where they considered banning large kitchen knives because they were too dangerous. You couldn't have a large kitchen knife out of the house, which is insane. The, Can I tell you, insane. you know what the problem is? It's not, it's not the, the, the uh, material thing. It's the person oh, behind the material thing not. that does this. Yeah, and I think I think we're I, I guarantee we're preaching to the choir. Everybody in the chat probably agrees. Well, I, I just keep thinking like this is the reason why people are okay with abortion. Abortion kills like over a thousand, you know, defenseless babies every day. Every day. No one's shocked about that. No one's mad about it. You know why? It's just little babies. Who gives a shit? It's just human really life. So, it's just. It's just. I didn't realize you were so pro-life. <laughs> yeah, you know, I am. I am. I'm incredibly pro-life. Oh, see, that's I'm pro-choice. So t totally opposite of you. I'm only pro-choice when it comes to guns. Oh no, I'm pro-choice. Let people do yeah. what they want. Uh, listen, <laughs> the thing. The thing is, is like if that's the law, that's the law. Fine. You know, I personally don't believe in it, but you cannot. You can't have people saying that people can go out there and destroy human life in this way. <laughs> And then you can't destroy human life in that way and think that you're actually going to stop anything, right? Ken Helmer's to stay on topic, Hank. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, but it's the, it's, the, it's the fact of the matter. You know, the thing is, one of the reasons why we have, why there is, a, a, where there are pro-choice laws in America is because if you made abortion illegal, you know what would happen? Women would still be out there having a. Oh yeah, they get you get a coat hanger in the back alley. Yeah, they'll still do things. Doctors would still be performing All of it abortion. All comes down to the same thing. That's what I'm saying. Drugs are illegal, and people still go find them. Everybody it's gets fucking not high. hard to go find. Them. Eminem got high before he got in the fucking. Oh, cipher. of course, of course. It's, it's, yeah. If somebody wants to do something bad enough, they're going to. They don't give a shit what you tell them. Yeah. So <laughs> that everybody's that, moral compass is different. And when you have one that's way fucking off base like this guy, you're going to have a problem. Yeah. Because he's a, he's, he's a, a disgusting human, human being. Like, he's broken. We yes, have broken exactly. human beings in the world. They're exactly. broken. And there's They're people who want to hurt do. other people. You can't legislate that out of, out of people. people. There are statistically, there's going to be anomalies in society. It's just yeah. the way it is. People and are going to come out broken. I hate to sound like an asshole, but I yeah. mean – People are going, there are going to be those in society that turn out to be serial killers or sociopaths or it's just when you have a large population, you're going to have outliers on either side. It's just how stats work. And honestly, you know, I'll, I'll say this again. I, I don't like the Sly Fire, but I, I believe it has a right to exist. Exactly. And honestly, if this guy didn't have it, there would be more people dead. The, the, him using a slide fire, if that's what he you really used, there were four, he would have destroyed more human beings by just taking 
spot because it was just like shooting fish in a barrel. The oh way yeah, that everyone and once, was once people got down and, and and the crowd dispersed, he was just shooting at dirt. I hate to be like, I sound like an asshole, but his the slide fire plus, I believe there were four jammed guns in the. Basically, he went firearm to firearm because it kept jamming. Because slide fires are fucking garbage. Yeah, the problem but is, is that I don't no want one... somebody telling me that I can't own it. That's what it comes down to. Well, me. and the other thing is, like, what happened is when Trump, I, I'm, I'm sticking to my guns on that. Trump opened this door. The NRA went in there and said, because you know what, I, I watched Wayne Lapierre do a bunch of different things, including he went and faced the nation, and he actually said that the NRA supports the ban on machine guns. So think about that. To me, that's personally bullshit. I don't think banning machine guns has stopped anything in America. No, of course not. You know, and I think it's bullshit. I don't think they should be banned. And the NRA supports that. And and they're saying that they also support that people should not be able to modify these firearms, these rifles. That's yeah. what he's saying. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So because he went out there and said that, now, how is the NRA going to fight back, push back against all this stuff that's coming out now? Porno. <laughs> you know, how, how are they going to push back? Your guitar says ban porno, and I believe they tried doing that in the UK like a couple years ago, and people went fucking ape shit because you cannot ban. <laughs> that is like the biggest industry. That is why Blu ray is Blu ray, and we're not using HD DVD as the porn industry. You can't porn. The you can't ban. ban the dude, industry. the reason why, the reason why we got movies. <laughs> like actual movies on 35 millimeter film and all porn, that, is, it's, it's for porn. I guarantee it. It's for porn. That's why we had movie theaters. Yep. The reason why you had VHS <laughs> became affordable. I remember when we first came to America in the 80s, like only rich people had VHS machines. You can't remember that, Patrick, because you were uh, born was, in like, yeah, by the time you were born in like 1995 everybody. or some craziness, right? Oh, so. <laughs> in 89, by the time I was a kid, we all had them. Well, okay. I do remember a Betamax, though. My grandparents had a Betamax. Yeah. So the reason why VHS became cheap and the reason why we have DVDs and all that kind of stuff is because of porn. <laughs> and, and it's just like with in Prohibition times. In Prohibition times, they banned alcohol and we just oh. got drunk. Yeah, yeah, you just go to a speakeasy. <laughs> yeah, so it's stupid. It's a stupid. It's a stupid thing. But the thing I'm saying now is, is how is the NRA? How are other organizations? How are people out there who are really pro gun going to push back at this point when the NRA went out there and said that yeah, we don't we don't support the modification yeah, of rifles? Yeah, the NRA has fucked us. <laughs> it's plain and simple. You know, and the funny thing about it is there's lots of dudes out there who are like, oh, the NRA's geniuses. They're playing 3D chess. They're thinking above us. I mean, even no, like yeah. um I and I and I'll admit I thought when the comment when when their post first came out, I was like, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. They, you know, they could be trying to head this off. This could be a good thing. Uh, no, they fucked us. <laughs> they no. have fucked us. They fucked us over, and I'm disappointed that lots of people, this YouTube guys, YouTube gun guys, YouTube gun guys got out there and said that the NRA is bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, and they and said now, that these guys the, are geniuses. Have you seen the backpedaling that they've, uh, the individuals have done today? No, I don't know. I heard that Hickok is backpedaling. I know oh, Hickok yeah, of course is he's out there saying One, that. I um, guarantee, let me look up the numbers, see how many users or how many. Yeah. Uh, uh, subscribers. Well, Hickok, I heard, is mad about the, these bills that have come out, but I don't understand how he could be mad about these bills. He told you they put their hand on the table. They're like, "This is what we're gonna do." Yeah, but what? But how can how happen. can Hickok? You know, uh, hey, I was a fan of Hickok Forty Five before I even started making videos. I get yeah. it. I respect the age. You know, I respect the fact that he's been doing gun stuff for a long time. I even like him. I think he's a cool dude. Same thing with Colin Noir. But these dudes are the, the, now. You're gonna see Kevin look up. These dudes. I just wanted to make sure I just wanted to make sure you're paying attention these right. guys these guys I like them I respect them and all that kind of stuff personally but these guys were coming out in the beginning of this and telling us that the NRA is playing 3d chess it's way above our heads and we don't understand how awesome it is what they're doing now what so let me let me stop you because uh, one thing I don't do is backpedal around from shit so until somebody exposed me to something different, I just put out a video on Instagram right before we started this, pretty much saying the same thing. So what do you have to show me that they flat out fucked us? So educate me again. <laughs> well, so you're asking me this question seriously? Now, I'm, do you look? See, this is a, a whole thing about value in somebody's opinion. If you have okay. something you can educate me on, I am seriously asking okay. you to tell me. Okay. So all right. So 
the the president Trump when this went down Trump said we're going to look into this and we're going to do something about it okay. and then the NRA came out and said that the NRA thinks that the ATF should go back even though the ATF twice looked at this under the Obama administration they right. think the ATF should go back and look at this and then right. they came out saying that they that they are that they are supportive of the ban on machine guns and they also do not think that people should be modifying their rifles and the rate of fire on their rifles this is from the NRA from Chris Cox and Wayne LaPierre of the okay. NRA saying this. My the last the last time I heard anything now, like I said, I just put out a video not even an hour ago. I did not see that. Now, in all fairness, I've been at work all damn day. I've been getting snippets of stuff. Yeah, now, but this didn't said, come out yesterday. This has been out since last week. So, you no, know, the last interview, and I forget the channel was on, and I'm not saying he covered everything on there. When I listened to Chris Cox, he did say, he said that he understands that the ATF is going to go look at it, and the reason why they're not putting, now whether he's telling the truth or not, the reason he's not putting, uh, or the NRA is not putting a ton of energy into that right now is because they're trying to do something else uh, with, was it national reciprocity? <laughs> I might be forgetting what was said, but it was some other focus they wanted to put it in because they understood that a larger ban was going to come. Now, that is the last thing I heard, so what I'm going to do now. Hank is, is notorious for not paying attention to people when they're talking. Oh. <laughs> what, what, what's it? I was I was it you're looking at cell phone. No, because I'm pulling up because because Kevin said that he didn't hear about this. So I'm gonna pull up from the NRA ILA. Patrick sent me this days ago when this happened. I'm looking to see. This was October 5th. This is yeah. a statement. Uh, Fairfax, Virginia, the National Rifle Association today issued the following statement. In the aftermath of the evil and senseless attack in Las Vegas, the American people are looking for answers as to how future tragedies can be prevented. Unfortunately, the first response of some politicians has been to call for more gun control. Banning guns from law-abiding Americans based on the criminal act of a madman will do nothing to prevent future attacks. Um, the, the, this is a fact that has been proven time and time again in countries across the world. In Las Vegas, reports indicate that certain devices were used to modify the firearms involved. Despite the fact that the Obama administration approved the sale of bump fire stocks on at least two occasions, the National Rifle Association is calling on the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives to immediately review whether these devices comply with federal law. The NRA believes that devices designed to allow semi-automatic rifles to function like fully automatic rifles should be subject to additional regulations. In an increasingly dangerous world, the NRA remains focused on our mission, strengthening American Second Amendment freedom to defend themselves, their families, and their communities. To that end, on behalf of our 5 million members across the country, we urge Congress to pass national right to carry reciprocity, which will allow law-abiding Americans to defend themselves and their families from acts of violence. I read the whole thing. Now, Obviously, the part that everyone stuck to in that, and in terms of the media, in terms of Democrats, liberals, progressives, is one that shot. one thing where they said that, that the ATF should go back and look at it, and they believe the modifying of it should not happen. And they went on TV and reiterated that over and over again. Now, go back. The interview I heard was the one with Chris Cox. Chris Cox pretty much summed up what you said, minus the whole the, the, the filler words of um, that they are definitely uh, supporting. They support going back to look. Now, those things I haven't heard and I haven't read. I'm not saying what you're reading off your phone is false. I'm just saying I didn't read them. Um, so <laughs> Wait a I, second. You can't say it's false. It's from them. And do you read not, it or not is what they said. Hey, hey, get off your defensive ass horse and listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not saying you, you were making it up. I'm not saying it's fake. See, here's another yeah, thing. Yeah, but you said that you did not read it. Not saying, I'm, what I'm saying is, if no matter what, now look, I know that everybody's a busy person, so this is not to be mean to be insulting toward anyone. But during the day, there is more time to do certain things than others. Social media and media, period, puts out a ton of information. I'm not going to absorb everything. I can only take what I have, think that I have enough, and go from it. So that's why I asked a serious question. Okay. What are you reading? That wasn't meant to be funny. That wasn't meant to be facetious. That was meant to be real. Tell okay. me what you have that I might not have seen before I can now come back to think. So now I have to go read that for myself now that I've been exposed to it and then come up with how I feel. So that's why I said that. And that needs to be something else that people can do with a lighter heart. If somebody asks you something, tell them 
share with them your information for they then can take that information and process it. There is nothing else I can fucking do. Only thing I can do is ask if I haven't seen it. Okay. So the, the, so problem, you, you, the problem that I have with them is they played their hand too quickly. If you're gonna, if you seriously want to go to a negotiation table with the Dems, you don't go to the negotiation table saying, "Here's what we're willing to give up." You say, "What are you willing to give us first? Because the person that talks first always loses. Yeah. I mean, so that's just okay, the basic Kevin. While we're waiting for you to absorb all of that, do you mm -hmm. want me to do you want me to text this to you? Shall I text this to you? Jesus. Yeah, text right. this to me, please do. Yeah, like so, so, so you can read it and absorb it and all that kind of good stuff. Yes, sir. Um, so the thing is, is that, you know, now while you're, while you're, we're waiting for you to do that and, and give us your opinion on what you think that means, you know, what those of us who were tracking what this means realized, like Patrick just said, is they basically opened the door. Even if there was a negotiation going on here, and it was some kind of genius like, hey, let's let them, let's go sit at the table. They want to negotiate and we go, go ahead, make uh, slide fire illegal, but what give us reciprocity. That would be a different thing. But you don't go out there and say that, you know, we this, sh this thing should be reexamined. It doesn't matter what administration it went through. There was someone fr that was with the ATF at the time that made this decision. And they said, as the laws are written about machine guns, they could find no other conclusion other than that a slide fire is totally legal because it is not a machine gun. You have to pull the trigger every time. The definition of a machine gun is you pull and hold the trigger back and it keeps firing and this and the slide fire or um, other things that are out like binary triggers, the echo trigger, all these different things that are out there, they, they do not fall onto the definition of being machine guns. But what the NRA did was open the door to that so now, trump cracked it and what you put but who opened the door the nra or trump because we started off saying trump did it yeah trump 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 cracked it and they opened it and then the freaking democrats jumped in there and now Repub we gave republic they gave republicans cover to to support things and now you've got now you're at the point where not only do you have diane feinstein putting forward bills that would kill this whole industry and ban anything that modifies a rifle or the rate of fire of the rifle as well as other shit that they're going to sneak in there you know you also have republicans pushing stuff forward now that's what we're dealing with so no matter what there's going to be a bill that's going to come up in Congress. They're either going to take Dianne Feinstein's thing alone, or they're going to take the stuff that Republicans are pushing. There's, there's a list of Republicans. That's what the video that Mac put out um, early this morning is about, that there's a list of Republicans, including two in South Florida, that, put, that push this bill forward. So now they're going to take these things and merge this, and then somehow in Congress they can't take care of health care, they can't do anything about taxes, but they're mm -hmm. going to push a bill like this forward. And the scary thing is everyone thinks, oh, there's no way in hell Trump is going to sign it. And I'll tell you right now, you have a very high likelihood that he will, especially if, it, if it's going to give him some kind of victory. Yeah. Okay, so, so let, me, let, me, let me circle this thing. So I, I definitely see the sentence that most people will have a problem with that came from the NRA. It says that the NRA basically is open for the ATF looking at anything that converts a semi-automatic rifle to a machine gun should be reviewed. That is, am I right by saying that baby face? That's what, that's the part. That's everybody what has everybody's upset about. Okay, so Hank, before I can get a full education, what did Trump do to crack it where the NRA, you say, kicked it in? So because, what he, well, so what I was saying is that, so when this tragedy first went down in Vegas, right? Right. Um, reporters kept asking Trump if they're going to do anything about gun control. And there's a there's a quote. I don't have it pulled up in front of me right now. You know, anyone who's listening to it could go pull this up. But Trump said, we're going to definitely take a look at this. OK, so that's what you mean by when you say he cracked it. Yeah, he cracked it right there. He didn't shut it down and say, like, you know what? There's no law that could have stopped this. He didn't say that. He said, we're going to definitely take a look. Okay. Right? So when he said we're going to take a look, that was the that was like the first blow. Then you got the next blow that the NRA comes out. And no matter, because Wayne LaPierre went back on TV and reiterated that they don't believe that these rifles should be modified. Wayne LaPierre is a FUD. We all know it. He needs to be. He went back on. So these guys, like, they're not. The, the crazy thing about this to me is they're not. I think they're just making these decisions on their own. And they're not even consulting and talking to anyone that really understands this. There's no one there that's going to say to them, wait a second, this thing is not a machine gun. 
And if you go after things like this, you're gonna you're gonna shut down any modifications. And right now, the state of the firearms industry, what people the where people are spending their money is modifying their guns. So right. if if any of these laws go into effect in even the least way, so let's say they don't sneak a whole bunch of other shit into this, right? If right. any of these laws wind up on Trump's desk and he signs it, you tomorrow will become a criminal. I will become a criminal. Patrick will be a criminal. Everyone watching this will be in violation of the law. Let me let me explain to people that might not be keeping up because I understand that there are levels of gun dudes. So to your point. Now, on to the bill, what I disagree with. So here's my one of my rifles. If you look at this rifle, there is a Geisley three gun trigger. And I don't know if you guys can see that. Is that can you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah I see that. I can see. It. Yeah, don't go, don't go too close. Yeah, we can see <laughs> we can see the G. Okay. Okay, okay, right. Okay, you had it right. I there. wanted to make sure you could see it though. You did see the guys, right? Okay. Yes. It's so. not HK, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it is a guys. Now uh -huh. I, bring, I brought that up and I bring it up because some people are like I heard a lot of guys saying, and I'm not trying to get off the subject, it's still on the subject. I heard a lot of guys saying, Oh, it doesn't matter what anybody says, bump stops suck, right? That's been what people have been saying. I don't yeah, I would agree. People. I would agree with it. I, I never I like never it. had it, never had an intention of owning one, never interested me. But what I will say is this the way that that bill is written, the reason why it's so dangerous for people that aren't totally understanding it is that it says anything that changes the rate of fire. Well, guess what this damn trigger does? It's so it, vague. It's it so could, vague. It could be yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah, but dude, it, you're, you, the way that you're shooting, Kevin, if you ride the reset of just a norm, you don't even need that Geisley trigger. It's a good trigger. You know, kudos to them, right? But you don't even need that. If you ride the reset of a of a normal mil spec trigger, you could you can increase your rate of fire. So exactly. you know you can you can bump fire with a stick with a rubber band you with can, your yeah. belt loop. Um, yeah. You know, there's Man, so many I, things that you can do it with. I think that like this is dangerous, and it's and we played into their hands. And the thing that I'm saying to you is that I saw other people who are supposed to be pro gun people out there championing what the NRA was saying instead of saying, NRA, what the hell are you talking about? Yep. You know, they were championing it, that thing. They were like, this is awesome. They're playing 3D chess. They, you know, they can think way above us. Other people, I saw Hickok doing it. I saw Colin Noir doing it and saying, you know, like Colin Noir, for example, said, yeah, at first I didn't understand it. And then it was explained to me. And now I understand how, you know, they're thinking way ahead here. And that basically sounds like someone gave them, the PR people gave these guys, we, we know Colin works for NRA, and we know that um, Hickok is sponsored by the NRA, right? So they gave them talking points, and they said, you guys just don't see the genius. Slow down, so, slow down. Time out, time out. I don't want to miss the points. Hickok is what by the NRA? By his own admission, he's sponsored by the NRA. Didn't know that. Learned something new today. Okay. Yeah. So... You know, and at the NRA, at the uh, the last annual meeting, he, he as well as other people had dinner with uh, Chris Cox and Wayne LaPierre. That you know, that doesn't mean they took them into a room somewhere and subjugated them to, you know, <laughs> um, Chris well, Cox's cock. But you know, definitely. Oh, come on, man. You know, definitely they sat down there and had dinner with these guys, and and that doesn't mean everyone that did that is is sponsored by them and all that kind of stuff. Um, after after the NRA, I think I think Mac, for example, um, was at was at the dinners and all that kind of stuff, and that's cool. I'm not knocking that, right? We when we go to these shows, we we go, we sit down, we have dinner with people. Yeah. After that, Mac came out and he was encouraging people to sign up for the NRA to get memberships, and what he was doing with his money from the from that membership from those memberships was donating it to charity. He came here on my show. I, I voiced my dis, my distrust and distaste of things that the NRA has been doing lately, specifically when they kicked the, U, the USCCA out of the annual meeting like two days before the annual meeting. I thought that was fucked up. Uh, just in case you didn't hear that clearly, that was fucked up, right? So uh, I talked about that and Max said, hey, you know, Pete Brownell is the president now and, and you know, I think he's going to do stuff and blah, blah, blah. And so... Um, he, he asked us to give them like four years and there'll be changes and all that. Well, when this, when this statement came out from the NRA, Mac shut down his support of the NRA immediately. Yep. Okay. Now other dudes out there were like, no, now I'm not saying that I get it. Like I work for people. I work for big daddy guns, you know? 
So I get it, and I and I say tell people that. But if Big Daddy Guns did some fucked up shit, I would be like, dudes, this you're doing the wrong thing. You, as a matter of fact, you can ask him. I'm always telling them like, hey, how come you guys don't have this thing, or you know, why aren't you going in this direction? Because you work from for someone doesn't mean you can't stand up there and say, look, you know, we're doing this thing the wrong way. That even goes back to the conversation that we were having about these football players. It might be easy to go take a knee somewhere, but what do you actually do? Do you act are you actually brave that you stand up to the face of your boss or put your money where your mouth is and, and say, no, we're going to do something about this and we're going to change things. And this would have been an opportunity for these guys who had a, a relationship with the NRA to say, you guys are doing the wrong thing and you need to reevaluate this quickly before it's too late. The truth of the matter is, it's too late when they put out the statement. Because right now that this is all coming out, what's the NRA gonna say right now? They can't really say anything. They already came out, put out a statement, and then went on TV and reiterated that they are against the modification of rifles. Yeah, if they're, if they're coming out saying, and I'll be the first one to say, if they're coming out and saying, and I know I read the, just read the thing you sent me, if they're coming out, anybody, NRA, GOA, NSSF, I don't care who it is. If anybody is coming out and saying that it's okay to put more restrictions on guns, it is absolutely not. Period. Yeah, so now, let me ask you, let me ask you this, Kevin. You you said you just read this thing, right? Yeah, I just read that one. I read other things, but first time I read that one. Okay. So, you know, I mean, you're a fair open guy. That's like the point of this whole conversation. What did you think about that? I think that the the one I didn't I didn't find anything necessarily wrong until the one particular sentence I had just brought up where it was like, um, we are okay. Basically, we're okay with ATF going back and reviewing anything that might modify a rifle, right? Into a machine gun. I think that everybody that knows guns to a degree, and I'm not accusing guys that don't know them that well that they're they're one thing or another. But if you know guns to a degree, you know bump fires suck, especially when you're trying to compare them to a real machine gun, like a legit select fire go go gun. It is nothing like it. Yeah, it's it's a whole like different it. manual of operation. Yeah. So I think that if they bypass that opportunity to educate people on the fact that a bump stock is, I can do the same thing with this trigger I got in this gun and a guy can do it with a bump stock, period, all right, without it. So I think that if, if that if they miss the ball on that and educating people on that, screw it up, flat out, you heard me say it. I do believe that at the same time, we have to hold everybody accountable. I 100% agree with you with saying no matter who you're aligned with, matter of fact, I will go further than what you said. You are not 100% aligned with anybody if you can't tap them on the shoulder in the back room and say, you're screwing up. You're really not their friend. You really don't have a relationship with that person, right? Or that, that entity or whatever it may be. Um, I do believe that we have to be slow to take because we don't know who did or didn't have those behind the scenes conversations, whether they listen to them or not, right? Because you always don't listen to what your friends tell you. You always don't listen to good advice. Um, are they going to retract it, that particular sentence or two? I don't know. Should they? Yeah, because it sounds messed up. Yeah, but isn't it late? I mean, don't you like? Do you think at this point they can really retract it? Uh, I mean, you can't. You can't take the pain back, right? Once it's there, you can pull the knife out. The scar is still there, right? Yeah, but you also can't take it back. I mean, the, the politicians out there that want to push this forward are going to use that, whether you take it back or not. Yeah, that now you're right because even if tomorrow, and I'm with you because I, and for guys, it might be unclear. What you're basically saying is tomorrow's what Thursday, so Thursday morning, 8 a.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time, the NRA stands up or a representative says, you know what, we take it back. Whatever you misconstrued, we take it back. The problem is it's in black and white. Now, going forward with any kind of gun control, it can be 30 years in the future, even if this ban doesn't go through. People are still going to pull that back up. Mm -hmm. At one point in time, you have roots in support of this. And mm -hmm. so clearly you understand this. And when I'm talking to people saying, even the like they did before, even when they were trying to say NRA members agree with us. I don't know if y'all remember that last run. Where was trying to were trying to ban guns. I think Hillary was pushing that one. Even yeah. NRA members agree that there should be more gun control. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. um, because NRA members were saying, yeah, we believe in background checks and they flipped it. So yeah, is mm -hmm. it gonna be used uh in the future and immediately? Absolutely. Will it set us back? Will it make the fight harder? Absolutely. I mean, there's no way there's no way around it. You're you're silly to argue that. I do think that it's going to take some creative work between A, people sitting down listening. Uh, admitting that they screwed up and we're going to have to figure out after those apologies and tears and, you know, embarrassments and whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm here and I'm hearing the pain now. I'm also 10 days, six months in the future. How the hell are we going to stop these people? 
Because mm -hmm. Feinstein, and the fact that it's, in it, and I'm not, and I'm not running away from the NRA, but here's another big thing. You said Trump cracked it, NRA might have pushed it in, but the floodgates, like the republic, it's a Republican leading the damn bill. Are you sure. serious? You know what yeah. I mean? From a lot of Florida, of all places, and right, and you wait, just wait a second joke. now. Wait a second. I'm just saying he's from Florida, man, and you just cracked the joke the other day. It was a couple <laughs> weeks ago, or whatever. You were like, they call Florida the gunshine state, right? Because everybody knows Florida is a big gun state. So even a Republican from a gun state, Florida is the model for concealed carry in this country. Miami is basically another country. Oh no, I didn't know he's out of Miami. Both, yes, those are the both, ones that support yeah, it are from Miami. Yes. <laughs> So and, uh, Miami's basically a whole. Yeah, if you guys, if you guys click in the description of this video, you will, uh, you will see um, a link to the bill. Um, you know, as well as a way that you could push back on it. But you can, you can just search this. I'll, uh, I'll pull up something here and read it to you from the news. So, for example, Breitbart had an article on it, and this is from Breitbart. It says Republican Rep. Carlos Curbelo introduces gun control bill for bump stocks. Rep. Carlos uh, Cabello put forward a Republican Florida, South Florida, put forward a gun control bill Tuesday designed to ban the manufacture, sale, or possession of bump stock accessories in the United States. Breitbart News reported that Barack Obama's ATF approved bump stocks for sale because they are accessories, not conversion devices. In other words, they do not convert a semi-automatic into an automatic. Correct. Curbelo gets around this with legis legislation that bans accessories that increase, quote unquote, the rate of fire of semi-automatic 16 rifle. I don't know what that means, but do not convert it into an automatic. Senator Dianne Feinstein, um, Feinstein, however you want to put it, Democrat California, has introduced a bill with very similar, similar language. And Breitbart News reported that the breadth of the ban means it will outlaw bump stocks, trigger cranks, and so much more. You know, so you can just go just go ahead and read this. Uh, it's Carlos Cabello. There's several other people. If you go, look at Max video, he goes through it. Uh, go now. Well, now it's too late. It's nine o'clock at night. Tomorrow, yeah. call them when you have a, a free moment. Yeah, I, I also you, encourage you guys to do calling them tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that people should go to social media, go to your your representatives. Don't let this thing go through the house. That's the place where we can sign it. We can't talk to Trump. He's going to do whatever the hell he wants to. And if you think you're safe because his son is into guns, nope. I think you're making nope. a big mistake. His son is not the president of the United States, and Trump doesn't listen to anyone. If you Trump haven't learned also, anything. Trump, I think, is looking for a win. He's yeah. tired. Uh, from what I can tell, he's tired of people shitting on well, him. Well, look, if he you're a billionaire, if you're a billionaire and you have Trump Tower and you've got Melania and all that, why the hell do you want to be in the White House getting your ass kicked every day? I don't think he okay, cares if he gets elected for another term. No, he can doesn't. I, can I ask you a question? Now, here, here's a brain teaser. And I'm, I'm just going to play devil's advocate here. What happens if Trump somehow, let's say he does want the second term, right? Let's say if he somehow takes this and uses his opportunity to cramp down on gun rights to win more people on the opposite side to bring them to his side while maintaining a certain level of the follow fellowship he already has in order to win. So what if he's recruiting to It'd win? be smart. It, it might Honestly, be smart, be, but he's definitely not going to be smart. Yeah, but he's he's, he's definitely not going to have my support. And I'm going to tell you right now, Eminem is not going to turn around tomorrow and say Trump's not a racist. Yeah, All exactly. the dudes in Hollywood aren't going to turn around tomorrow. The media is not going to turn around tomorrow. You know, Republicans that don't fucking like him aren't going to turn around tomorrow and go, oh, no, he's awesome. Hmm. You know, this is just the way politics is played. And I don't think, you know, maybe... You, you can have a situation where he doesn't care because he can get this as a win, but he, you know, and maybe, like you said, get some people over on his side, but he can also maybe they can give him health care, you know, that it's going to be changed and, you know, they can give him tax reform. But here's the thing. Here's the really ironic, fucked up thing about all of that. Republicans control Every thousand is right now. Right. They're, they're, you know, they control the Senate. They control Congress. They're in the White House. So what the hell? If you if you want if you want to do something with health care, just do it. The thing the truth of the matter is they can't. You know, uh, McCain isn't going to support anything that Trump puts can't forward because he's pissed off that he didn't become president. But now here's another yeah. thing. Too. Now, can I can and, and it, this is what I mean by the whole and I'm sticking to guns. But this is what I mean by the whole thing about us as American people putting our all our faith and so much gumption into one person. 
How screwed up was it? And I'm not knocking you or anybody if they support Trump, but how screwed up is it for a president to say, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't know a line, a word by word, a verbatim, to say that I don't respect those that are captured. You know what I mean? When he was talking about McCain being a POW. Oh, did he yeah, really I mean, say that? That's, yes, he did say that. But, yeah, you know, it's, yes, it's screwed up. He said, I don't respect soldier. Something along the lines of I don't respect. Yeah, that's because him and McCain have been going back and forth at so, each other. Look, we've had, we have a lot of that in America. Kevin, this brings me back to, or it brings, brings it back to, I, I, you, can't be, uh, you can't be full force on, on Trump because, you know, he's not going to be perfect all the time. He's he's, he's going to be wrong a lot. But, of but how did how did we even get Trump? You know how we got Trump in the first place. You know how we got Trump. I think the because I because the NRA decided to endorse him, right? And you think that's the only reason he won. I don't yeah. know. I don't think it's the only. I think Clinton won. I think he beat out everyone else because he wasn't playing the same game that all the, the the rest of the guys that the Republican Party was putting up. You know, they're full of shit. You know, they were just putting up people that no one wanted to vote for. So Trump was up there. The more the media talked shit about him, you know, the more they pissed off. People were very pissed off. And when people get pissed off, they 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 do vengeful shit or they go, oh, OK, you want me to show you some. Sh so it's a combination of things. But on the gun side, what happened is that the NRA just went out there. They never polled people. They never said, what what do you they didn't care. Like you see in that statement, they're talking about their five million members. They could give two shits to rub together to think about what their five million members cared about when they went out there and endorsed Trump. They just went ahead and endorsed Trump. Right. And ultimately, Trump got the nomination and it was Trump and Hillary. So there's no way in hell I'm voting for Hillary. And at the same time, the, the people that were in the independent party, I wasn't going to vote for them either. You know, and what I was hoping to do was slow down, stop or reverse the gun control that's been going on in America. You know, so that's the reason why I, I voted for Trump personally. That's why I did that. Now, you know, that's all good up until the day when they put a gun control bill on Trump's desk and he signs it. Mm -hmm. It's, go it's all good up until that day, you know, and is it a possibility? Yeah, it's a possibility because right. even though we have a majority in, in both houses, in Congress and the Senate, there are Republicans who are willing to, to uh, they, they, they want to get rid of this thing. And if you look at how Trump even became, when, when, when Trump won the nomination, there were lots of places that the Republican Party didn't want to push, they didn't want to push him. They didn't want to promote him. So they gave up the, the duties of promoting him to other people and let people take over those parties. That happened here in Gainesville, where I'm at, you know, and other people took over the party and led the fight there because uh, the, the real Republican Party didn't want to do it. And so that's how Trump got elected. And, and that's why lots of us think that, hey, this guy's really on our side. He's going to, you know, he's going to do something for us, you know, um, and he did. We fall, you know what? In a, in a bigger scheme of things, man, do we fall into how often do we fall into traps? Are we are we so and I'm just asking this kind of just out there in the air. Are we so in love, which we should be, by the way, but are we blindly in love with our freedom that we're willing to support anybody that convinces us that they, they align with us without doing like if Trump just stood up in front of everybody and said guns rule? Are we are we deaf as, a, as an as an entity as a whole? Are we deaf to everything else? Do we not care? We don't care about anything else. We can keep our guns. So I'm not saying one guy or one gal is guilty, but as a whole, do you think we're, we're deaf to that? Well, I don't think it was simply that, right? I think it was his son. It was um, it was that he actually came to the NRA, you know, and, and, and he did what needed to be done when other people weren't willing to do it, right? There were lots of other people that didn't want to come to the NRA, that didn't want to talk to us. I think, look, the, ultimately all of this is all conjecture. What I think is that the way that we could fix this going forward, the problems we have with the NRA, the problems we have with politicians, all the old institutions have to get burned down. I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to disagree with that. Now that um, I'm, I'm in general, I agree with because I, I will say that I was kind of shocked. One thing that I was shocked and a lot of people were shocked by. So at Cary Guard, you were there. Were you were you packing at NRA? Absolutely. Hells yeah. Okay. I was and I was arm's length from the president's son. Like who does that? Like we're, we're in the history as a as a room convention center full of armed guys standing next to the president's son and and chit chatting with him and talking with him and taking pictures. And so that prompted a whole lot of people to be like, we definitely made the right decision. Cause you just heard the passerby's like, 
that's cool to see, you know, somebody like that at a gun show at a gun. Yeah. Well, I, I'm yeah, I mean, I'm not you know? in the inner circle, so I didn't stand arms no, from that. anyone. I think oh, when they saw the mohawk coming, oh, well, I didn't even try. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. You know, they're only looking for the black guys that are wearing HK hats. Oh, that's what it was. So, like, get that close. <laughs> it, 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 you have to like you have to be a black guy that supports HK to stand next to the president's son. I mean, it is. It's a mixture of things, right? It is a mixture of things. I'm just teasing you. Okay, listen. Uh, let's take a quick break here for one second. We've got right. we've got a lot of people right now. We've got a lot of people watching this. So I want okay. to remind everyone that's watching to click that thumbs up button. Okay, we really need it. We support it. Click the thumbs up button and please share this video that we're doing right now. Let your friends and family know on social media that we're having a, what I think is a good conversation. You know, we're being respectful. Yep. Some, to some extent, you know, as uh, respectful as we can be. Uh, we are being a little crass. I can admit to being a little crass. So definitely do that. And then I want to take a quick break and I want to I want to talk about um, I want to do like a little something a little bit different here. And I want to talk about G. Michael Hopf. Have you guys ever heard of G. Michael Hopf? No. So he's an author that I'm going to try to get to come on the show and talk to us. And he's an author. He's a gun guy. Um, he's a uh, a Marine, a veteran, the U.S. Marine Corps, uh, author of the New World series, and he has a book out. It's a post-apocalyptic thriller called Day of Reckoning. Okay, and um, there's a sale going on right now on uh, Amazon, and there's a link in our description that you guys can click through, and uh, you can get it like 99 cents on Kindle and 12.99 on paperback. Wait, so Lola has nicely, Kindle? huh? A dollar for Kindle? Yes. Jesus, hold on. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Man. So, you know, uh, what is that? Is that too expensive for you? Is that too no, expensive? I'm saying, for you? I actually kind of want that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to, the reason why I'm talking about this is I'm actually going to get this off. You know, I like authors. We've had uh, Chris Weatherman, Angry American on. I'm trying to get Larry Korea. I don't know if you guys know about Larry Korea, but he does uh, like uh, sci fi fantasy fiction stuff, but he's a gun guy also. And he does real gun stuff. So I'm trying to get him on. Um, but Larry Hopf, we have a very good chance of getting on. So let's get out there, support a, uh, like a Marine, support a gun guy, you know, G. Michael Hopf. That's how you pronounce it. Uh, oh, how, do you, how do you pronounce it? Hopf. That's just a weird last name. Hopf. Yeah, the Hopf. So, uh, yeah. So I, I just. Uh, oh, go ahead. I mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Yeah. So I just want to encourage. I just wanted to take a break there and encourage folks out there that are listening to us right now. Uh, Lola has put a link in the description, so you know you guys can uh, go check that out and um, you know check out that author. Also, if you've heard of him and because I haven't, so I'm going to go get this on audio and uh, on audio book because that's how that's, I like. It. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. We're we're yeah. yeah. If it's it it looks like it has good reviews. We're going to a, a wedding in Virginia this weekend, so yeah. I need something to listen to. Yeah, that's a good thing to do when you're driving. So I'm going to go listen to it that way. And also, while we have this nice audience that, like I said, I'm reminding you guys to click the thumbs up and share the video on social media and all that. Kevin does have a a, a worthy charity that I think we should at least take a break here. I don't think we should wait until the end. We should give Kevin uh, like a platform to talk about it. So, Kevin, okay. are, are you prepared to do that? Yes, I am, sir. Yeah. Okay. And we'll we'll try to get to also put that. I don't think that's in the description right now, but we'll make uh, it. Out. I can. You want me to send it? Send it over to you again. Uh, yeah. Send it to me, please. A short link, Kevin. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I some things be long, but let me. Okay, let me go get. It. Uh, but I will say while while Hank is giving me this uh this gracious time as I'm leading into it, uh, allow me to say this. Were you fighting with uh, Tango Hunter? Who me? Yeah. No. Why? Wow. What is he saying? Oh. Oh no! Oh, Tango Hunter was saying that me and you are about to break yeah. up over this. Yeah, yeah, yeah I posted that. That's, that's, what I was, that's, that's what I was about to address. Yeah. Well, well, okay. So I, I will let you address it. But let me just, let me just say this: um, for all you people who are not aware of how you know the Nubian brothers get down, <laughs> it doesn't even you, need to, it doesn't even need to be Nubian. Hank does this crap with me too. I went to go pick up a shotgun from the, him the other night and. I was like, oh, I'll get home, I'll get home. It's getting late. And it, like two hours later, we we're like yelling about politics. So Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm a very passionate person. But no, this is how, yeah, we, we are friends. We're not breaking up. Go Kevin ahead, Kevin. Charity. No, so oh, yeah. it, it's kind of leading right into the point. I'm glad Babyface said what he said and Hank said what he said. <laughs> Look, guys, I didn't, one, I didn't come on here to win anything with anybody. All right? I'm a, I'm a man and I stand for what I believe in. I also respect other men. 
So, and I think that's what we have to get back to. And when I say men, I mean women as well. Like we all have to respect each other's views. Um, I didn't even know me and Hank didn't set up the NFL conversation. It just popped off, right? <laughs> yeah, so, that was not planned. <laughs> it off. So we, you, everybody's so concerned with winning an argument or winning a disagreement. I consider Hank a friend. Okay, so I am more than willing. Matter of fact, because I respect him and because I respect Babyface and I respect most people, I am willing to listen and go back and forth with you as long as it takes until we tire. Right. As long as we are trying to get an opinion out at the end of the day, we are all going to have something we disagree about. But at the end of the day, what we can agree on is that we need to remain free, uninhibited Americans to do what the hell we please as long as it's in the confines of the law and we don't allow the law to become so clamped on us that we can't breathe, i.e. abiding by the law but losing all your gun rights while doing it. So don't be afraid to get out there and have the hard conversations. As a matter of fact, uh, we all are saying get out, call your senators, call your local politicians, call this dude down in Florida, give them your opinion. You have to be able to have a debate. You have to be able to articulate your words in order to do that, all right? Yelling gets you nowhere really if you cannot exchange dialogue with somebody your point is mute yeah and so, insulting insulting somebody puts up a defensive barrier and so you're not going to get anything and, out. yep you're not going to get through to you call somebody a jerk right off the bat yep. you get to maybe rant and rave as much as you want to yeah, but your point is going to be lost we have lost the art of articulation yeah i think you should totally make your point as gentlemanly as whatever's possible and <laughs> then talk about their hk paraphernalia afterwards <laughs> now and a, funny, a, funny thing, uh, a funny thing about the hk thing i was totally not wearing this today and access Bullshit. no no, please, no, dude, dude, no dude, dude, that dude. is a he did that it on purpose is, for this. Yeah, for this that is a lie. You have multiple HK outfits, and you I make do. sure so, that those outfits are clean and HK ready for every time you come shirt. on air. You this know. is my shirt here. Oh, no. wait. Oh, oh, okay. I take it back. I take it back. No other choice. Oh, okay. That's okay. okay. You know what? I, just, I, I, I didn't notice that because it's modeled after the HK logo. It is Excuse not me. modeled after the HK logo. <laughs> now, the hat I put on because uh, Axis hit me up and said, man, will you please wear the HK to hat tonight to get Hank going? <laughs> Who said that? Axis did, man. He's in the chat. He's talking to you now. It oh. He's telling me, like, wear that hat to uh, get uh, Hank going tonight, please. <laughs> but that's why I put it on, all right? Because the people requested it. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> I sent you the uh -huh. link. To the you, I hope that for all this advertising that you're doing for HK, <laughs> that we actually get <laughs> HK's ass to come on here one day. God. They don't <laughs> want better be worth of this. It. Hey, you know what? If I can oh, find... Oh, wait a second. Babyface, you don't want HK to come on? No, here? no, no. I'm saying HK doesn't want any part of <laughs> oh, this. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, don't let them I, look I, at any of these shows before they come I, on. I, okay? I'll say that. I'm going to say, I'm going to I'm gonna sum it up, then I'll move on to what, what Hank's giving me a platform for. So, guys, look, don't be afraid. If you call a guy your friend, we don't grow unless we we, we rub against each other. Iron sharpens iron. We're going to have to do that. You have to be open to listen to people's dialogue. A lot of times in a gun community, gun, yeah, gun community, that's one thing we're slow to do. That's why even I wanted you guys to pick up when I asked Hank, I didn't hear that. I seriously want you to tell me what that is. That is your chance to actually know what's going on. Now, Hank was the defensive ass jerk when it came to it. But, <laughs> you know, you still have to be open to listen to what somebody has was, to say. So to me, it's not about, I look to win the debates when it comes to somebody who's trying to oppress me. When it comes to somebody who's trying to disagree with me or has a point opposite of mine, as long as they're not trying to oppress who I am as a person, I am open to listen to that. All right. So I'm not going to come on here and try to make it a point to a beat up somebody I call a friend and then beat down a fellow gun guy. Not gonna do it. All right. Not gonna. No, you know, and, so, and I'm not interested in that either. I started. I I started doing this. Um, you know, and we do this like five times a week. I started doing this so that I felt that there are lots of us out there that our voices don't get heard. To be honest with you. Yeah, you know, yeah. um, we try to go on other people's stuff. We try to go on other people's platforms and all that. And it's not to it's not to come down on those people. But even if you can get on there, you're not really going to have the opportunity to get anything across. You know what I mean? Right. So They're going to. Yeah, I don't want to knock anyone for that, but what I when I thought about it, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do something, and we're gonna talk however we want to, and it's gonna be a more open thing, and I'm gonna invite people to come on, and I've invited lots of people to come on the show, and um, Kevin came on the show, and I like him, and you guys like him, but I've met him in person before, and we've done things, and he was, you know, very generous, <laughs> and uh, I thought you were gonna go, but I've met him sometime in person. I really hated him. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I met him and he was, you know, I met him at, at uh, where do we, where do we talk at NRA show, I think. Yeah, we talked down to NRA in Georgia, as a matter of fact. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the fact that I liked him and then you guys liked him, I said, okay, this is a guy that can come on. But I could tell you something, to remain friends with me, you have to have a thick skin and you have to be willing for someone to push back. I'm not the kind of friend that's not going to, like, if your breath stinks, I'm going to say, dude, I love you, but your breath stinks. <laughs> you got to do something because it's fucking killing me. And I don't want to wear a gas mask the whole time. And I don't think that makes me a bad person. I think lots of people are friends with people and they're not willing to tell them what they think. And I'm totally, I'm fine when people tell me what they think about me. You know, this is how you had Michael Jackson sleeping with people's little kids. You know what I'm saying? No one was willing to say to Michael Jackson. That's hey, a hell of a stretch from. It's, it's a leap. It's how it happened. It's how it happened. Hey, don't fuck my kid. Had, well, yes. Why would people voluntarily set their kids to go hang out with Michael Jackson because they were so enthralled with him and they couldn't tell him, like, hey, this is wrong? And I'm just saying to you that whether it's us as friends, we should be able to tell each other when we think the other person's wrong. We should be able to make our point and all that. But, but this is also the problem with a lot of with the politicians. They don't want to listen to us once they get in office and to organizations like the NRA and a lot of other organizations out there that don't want to listen to us once they get there. They just try to figure out how to silence us. And I could tell you, I have like personal experience with the NRA and SHOT Show. For example, um, the NSSF that puts on SHOT Show, that mm -hmm. organization came out dead dead against the um slide fire and they're, and they're saying they're gun guys but they're not they're not gun guys they've come out i'll, I'll pull up the article while kevin is oh, talking yeah. yeah i haven't read that one either. yeah but we but you know this is the problem that we have and this is why i started this this format and and this platform here that we have here so that we can um have these conversations and push back with each other and get it all worked out so no we're not you know we're not enemies. Babyface has learned a long time ago how to deal with me. He goes, you know what? I'm tired. <laughs> that's his that's his solution. He learned that from Lola. It's the same shit that Lola says. He goes, you know what? I am tired and I don't have time to listen to you right now. So, so anyway. Kevin, no, Kevin, though. Kevin, no, though. Okay, isn't going to say that anytime soon. Kevin huh? has, yeah. Huh? yeah. Go ahead. It's, it's all you. I locked it on you. Go okay. Ahead. All right. So. Moving off of that on to, to Brighter Pastors. So Saturday, October 14th is coming up, guys. And the reason Hank is giving me this moment is because I want to remind you guys, if you could do anything to help the shooting for the Cure event, it will be appreciated. So there is a GoFundMe set up, and I'm pretty sure Hank is sharing it with you now. Uh, the event is going to do something different. So our mission, uh, not only to help beat down cancer, I think as much as we've been uh, debating tonight, no one will debate that. We, we all know cancer and terminal diseases suck, um, and we want to do our best as a two-way community to fight back against it. Uh, so what we're doing, we're putting on Saturday, August the 14th, is, uh, if you will, kind of an IDPA or shooting competition-ish match between cancer patients and survivors. Uh, this match is going to feature uh, local professional coaches and instructors. They're going to team up with these patients, and they're going to have a shooting competition um, in teams against other teams. The ultimate prize we're giving away is a customized Glock 42, uh, done up by Miss Midwest Cerakote. is a fight against cancer Glock 42. Um, and then we have um, several sponsors involved, and I'll go through those in a minute. We also have the main prize uh, to be given away outside of the Glock 42 is a mil spec AR-15. The complete upper uh, upper receiver was even donated by Safety Harbor Firearms here off this channel. Um, so we're doing a great thing, and we need your help. So. The reason I'm talking to you guys now, if you can find it in your heart to go to the GoFundMe, we had a $2,000 goal and we are roughly $1,200 short of that. Uh, so anything you can do to help, you know, go in your heart, help pull out some funds. I know people are always asking you for money for one reason or another, but if we can do anything to help ease the blow of cancer to these families, I would love to do it. So yeah, Lola, yeah. can you, can you go give some money to this charity, please? Woman. Okay. Lola's okay, Lola. on it. She's on it. <laughs> Uh, we appreciate Lola and Hank for what for their contribution. So uh, we had a lot of great companies jump in it. So it's going to be a couple of giveaways. Um, Enforce uh, jumped right in and they're helping out. Uh, we have Misconceal, uh, Tactical Response, um, Vinici Frenzy, which is a concealed carry purse maker. Uh, Proper jumped in. Uh, Black Rain Ordinance donated things to it. So a lot of these companies that you guys go out and support anyway really jumped in and started uh, started some uh, some traction to help out. 
um, I'm a Midwest Cerakote, CNS Metalworks. I mean, the Rain St. Louis, Western St. Louis. We had a bunch of companies jump in and throw their support. And now we just need the people to jump in and support it as well. So uh, just explain to us, if we go to the GoFundMe, and is that like buying a raffle ticket or how is that working or what? What's, if you, if you, what I will make a deal with the audience tonight. If you go to the GoFundMe and you spend uh, in increments of $11, and I'm saying 11 because GoFundMe takes money in case you didn't know. It. <laughs> so in, okay. in increments of $11, uh, if you guys want to do that and you do that tonight, I will um, either on the show here show you your raffle ticket number or um, take a picture on IM and send it to you if you buy in increments of 11. So $22 gets you two tickets, $33 gets you three tickets, so on and so forth and so on. Now the prizes, if you're interested in it for the raffle, the main prize is a mil spec AR-15. Uh, the second prize is a WMLX light, 800 lumen light from Enforce. Uh, the third prize on the table will be a local training coupon, but if you're not in St. Louis, it's gonna be a training coupon to the Rain St. Louis West. And we also have some Black Rain t-shirts up and a bag from proper i believe so uh you can you can still win a right a rifle a light just make sure if you're trying if you win that rifle um or you want to try to win that rifle that you are in a state where you can own it all right so make sure you're in a, a friendly state where it can actually be transferred over to you through your local ffl and you will have to complete a background check to pick it up just be aware okay absolutely so i want to encourage everyone to go out there and give to give to this cause i think it's a good cause good thing that kevin's doing you know um and and how many days do you have left to reach this uh, two thousand dollar goal? Um, really, I mean, really, we're going to be running it till Saturday at um, four o'clock. We pretty okay. much three thirty p.m. Central Standard Time. We right. pretty much put off the clock now for anybody trying to buy a raffle ticket, um, like via from wherever via on uh, his Facebook on page. The um, okay, so Lola wants to know where the link is on your Facebook page. Um, I just put it in the description, Lola. And it's it's all. And then I also put it in the chat. So, okay. Okay. yeah, it's okay. a link to a GoFundMe. It's there in the chat. Lola's trying to do it. I want to encourage everyone to go out there and support this cause. It's a good cause. You know, um, you know, it's not just the prizes that are involved here that you can win and all that kind of stuff. It's just, I think, uh, you, the, the personal satisfaction, gratification that you get from doing a good thing, it, you know, I think that. You won already when you do that. I, I know that that sounds like cliche or whatever, but please go out there and help support this, especially those folks out there that, um, you know, appreciate every, everything that Kevin does when he comes on the show, <laughs> you know, and pours his heart out there. If, you, if you're one of those folks, then go out there and help Kevin out. I see the Tyvin show pledge five bucks to us, and he says, great show tonight. That's from the Tyvin show. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to ask the Tyvin Show, you need to go. I put this in the link. You need to go give to this charity. And not just you, Tyvin Show. All those folks who are out there listening to this, I'm asking you. I know everyone can't do that right now, so I don't expect everyone to ju go jump and do that right now. I know people have bills and all that kind of stuff. You've right. got time, obviously, but let's help Kevin reach his goal. You know, um, he's at 8.05 right now, so... You know, this thing could happen less than uh, 1200 bucks, and we can make this goal be reached and we can help Kevin put this on and we can help people out. So I um, I definitely say do that. Everyone's saying tits. So there you go. Save the tatas. Yeah. You know? So this is for breast cancer, obviously. Right. Um, You know what, man? I was going to limit it to breast cancer, but we're just going to help. Everybody. Oh, it's not. Oh, OK. All right. So. You know. And I got, and people were asking too. Oh, everything's gonna be now. The Glock will be uh, uh, in the, in honor of Breast Cancer Month. It will be uh, Breast Cancer Pink theme. But it's um, I just want to help everybody. You know, the more and more I got into it and what cancer does. Now, a little background. I've had my 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 best friend, which is like my sister, um, suffer from uh, breast cancer, and my mom was also uh, diagnosed with cancer. So mm -hmm. I understand those fights personally. And when you see them up close and personal, man, it hurts. Mm -hmm. It hurts. So. Uh, and then I've known people to have like prostate cancer. Uh, people don't understand men get a lot of cancer too. So absolutely, you, both my brother and my dad had um, prostate cancer. So oh really? Yeah. Yeah. So it, and it, and I think even for and it's not and I'm not making this racial, but prostate cancer for uh, 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 guys like us, we have to start getting checked. What do they recommend? Thirty eight. Because the average guys, uh, will, like, at least when you get in, yeah, I think yes, I think for African Americans, which I don't like that word at all. For black like, dudes, yeah, I think it's like thirty-eight. I yeah. want to. Oh hell, I'm thirty-eight. Uh oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, 
you might want to go get that digital <laughs> digital check. Yeah, I heard they can do it by the blood now too. FYI, uh, I heard no, make sure it. you get the digital check, man. That's yeah. how. You know. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's what I recommend. Um, what was that thing I was going to tell you guys about? I was telling you guys that I was going to look into something. Um, I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> there was something that, oh, the eight, oh, oh, here we go. I found it. Okay. I was going to tell you guys, well, actually, I'll wait. I found it. So you guys go ahead and, and do your thing. I found what I was talking about. Go ahead, Kevin. Um, yeah, but it, you know, it, it's just one of those things. Um, where we want to get out there and help everybody. You know, another thing about it too, man, and I'm, I'm not saying I'm the only guy that does this. I know a ton of great people to do it. Uh, we just had another rally uh, to help out, you know, a guy and his family the other day on the show where we raised all kind of money. Um, but we want to we want to show that as two way people, even when we come up fighting gun bans and stuff like that, right. there are all kind of things you can do. And giving back to charities and getting out there and being a good a good member of society, you know, whether it's donating to charity, helping a lady cross the street. Being a two-way guy, that, that goes a long way. People remember that, right? Um, and I will tell you, we, we all step into the lines there in different ways because I'm going to go from a charity to in two weeks, and I don't think I have even shared this yet. In two weeks, I have to take that momentum, and I'm going into one of the most hostile environments I've ever been in. But I get to take all the goodness with me into this environment to have the community stand up for me. So to the point of doing charities, to Babyface's point earlier, where he was saying, you know, you shut people down when you insult them. I got invited to invited to a local meeting and assembly of general counsel that is a hundred percent pure democratic anti-gun oh I, for a second i was scared i thought you were going to say you got invited to a ku klux Klan. I, I swear that would be a little bit interesting not sure how it would work out but um, uh -huh. um but they invited me in and the reason they invited me in was because of the work i did around the community so they were actually willing to say and their words, not mine, because of the nature of who you are. And I'm not I'm not different than Hank or baby faces just because I'm here doing it mm -hmm. um, because of who you are. We are more than willing to invite you in. But you can educate us about guns and why we should not be against. <laughs> they were like, we only sort of fucking hate you. Not yeah. completely. Yes, it we didn't like you enough to let you in the door. Now they're going to try to get me in there and slaughter me. Oh, God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, so I see that I see the numbers going up a little bit on the. Um, shooting for a cure thing we've put we put a link in the uh, in the chat room here there is a link in the description you know what i just wanted to say like for people who can't donate something right now i understand that there's several ways that you can help us and one of those ways is you could share this so i just want to encourage everyone to um share this on their social media that would help a lot you know we're we're going to do the same thing um kevin actually um text me right now that link if you can and I will okay. go put it on my social media right now. Okay, we'll do. Yeah, I will go put that on my social media if you send it to me. And uh, same thing with you, Babyface. Babyface has like a brand new Twitter. You want to tell right. the people what your Twitter handle is? <laughs> it's a uh, real Babyface P, all one word. The real, like Not we've gotten to the level where you have to put real, real Babyface P. But there's a rapper out there that took Babyface P. Ugh. How did really you let is. that happen? It's How did you... <laughs> it really is. You know who this rapper is, Kevin? Because I never heard of this dude. Yeah, man. I, you know, I, I got. It might sound sad, but I got an eleven-year-old man. I have to monitor his music, and I learned, <laughs> I learned about all kind of people, man. It's yeah. it and like, there's a rapper named Babyface P. Okay, that's interesting. You should be like, yo, I get on this, I get on this podcast every night with Babyface P, and he'd be like, holy shit, that's awesome. And you'd be like, no, it's just, it's just <laughs> random white guy in Florida. Well, first of all, if <laughs> Kevin's son says, holy shit, that's awesome. There will be a butt whooping. <laughs> That's true. But, <laughs> oh, you're so smart. <laughs> those, will be, those will be famous last words. <laughs> what you say? That was kind of cool, but you got to get it. All right. Oh, I got someone you. says the link is broken. The H is missing. Okay. So let me oh, check. Hank, the worst. For me? Oh, in the description, maybe? Let, the, yeah, let me. I will check the description right now. Okay. I will just check it right know. now. Thank oh. you. Who let me know? That's Melonhead849. I will go in there and put in the H. Hold on. Da, 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 da. Okay, he's right. Or she's right. Whoever said that. In chat again. <clears throat> uh, I'll put that in and save it. So go back there now. So that's my bad. I've probably been messing up. You know what, Kevin? You could have reached that goal already, man. And I totally messed it up. Uh, all right, you'll make it up. I'll, I'll take the I will take the blows on that one. So yeah, so definitely you guys can help us to share this. 
Um, Kevin, Kevin just uh, texted it to me, so I'm going to go put it on my social media, and I'd just like to uh, encourage everyone to do that. Go put this on your social media. Share this stuff up. Share yeah, it I do want to give a big it, shout out to um, Darius Elfler. Forgive me, Darius. Uh, Darius, if I'm saying your name wrong, it charge it to my, uh, my head, not my heart. Uh, Darius Elfler, big shout out to him for his donation, and big shout out to the Stranges for their large donation. Greatly appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. That's all Lola. Lola is the boss of the money. <laughs> uh, I'm not, listen, I am not too macho to tell you guys, I don't spend more than 20 bucks without first conferring with Lola. Hey, because man. I want to be fed. That's mm -hmm. right. I want to sleep in my bed. And I, oh, your son's coming in. I can't say what I was going to, I can't say the rest <laughs> of what I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say, and I want to make sure I get that booty. So, okay. Um, <laughs> we all oh, trust me. We understand. Yeah, I don't. I haven't, dude. I haven't literally had my own um, bank account card, and I can't tell you. You know what? You want to know the honest guy truth about something? Let me tell you guys a secret. Here's the way I get any extra spending money. I wait till I do a couple of classes, and you know the students pay me, and I'll be like, "Sure, like, how many students do you have?" But like, you know, I had six, and I really had like eight, so I pocket the, you know, the last two. Keep it to myself. <laughs> That's the only way I get a little spending money. <laughs> otherwise, I gotta otherwise I gotta get it cleared. Wow. Yeah. Um, you know, that's how I that's how I keep things, you know. That's like people always like, how are you still married? You know, they always ask Lola why she's still married to me. Good and question. so one of my you know, first of all, I got the you know, that uh donkey dong going on. Oh so wow. For you guys uh, who don't ooh. know, that's number one. <laughs> <laughs> that just, just happens. We know that the show I'm is being after, facetious, I'm lying, that's not me. So we can we no. can start talking. You about. know what? The, the 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 way that I do it is by um letting Lola control the money. <laughs> yeah, whenever she gets really mad, I go, you know what, you need to you need to buy some shoes. <laughs> You know, so and then she's like totally fine. As long as she could go buy some shoes, it's all good. So yeah, I'm publishing this right now on the Hank Strange fan page, and I'm gonna put it even on my uh, personal, you know, my personal uh, Facebook page, which is also Hank Strange for anyone who wants to go in there and uh, follow me. You're totally welcome to follow me on the personal or the fan page or whatever floats your boat. You gonna say hi tonight? Hey. We got we got invaded again. Hey, what's up, beautiful? Good. You sleepy? Time is it time to go to bed? Yes. We're we're oh. yelling and keeping her up. Oh. <laughs> we go sleep. Uh, so I'm get I'm guessing your dad is not using the headphones like he's supposed to. <laughs> uh, no, we uh, my mic works works great. Plus, I like for them to hear what's going on. Oh, oh, really? So, uh, uh oh, mm -hmm. they've been hearing all. My <laughs> oh God, I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah. Why did you tell us that now, Kevin? <laughs> no, they're, no, they're, the kids are there far enough where they can't hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm tweeting it out on the Twitterverse. I appreciate. I'm also tweet. twittering it out. There you go, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Twittered out, my friend. Daddy, love you. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you what. I'm even gonna put it on um, LinkedIn. Let's see how the how the hell do I do that? LinkedIn. I haven't been on there forever. Yeah. Uh, you know, really, that, that's not really what LinkedIn is for. Right? I'm putting it up there on LinkedIn. <laughs> it's up. It's too late. This Patrick. is how you get a job at like middle management. That's what LinkedIn is. I, oh, I put my videos on LinkedIn. What? Do you see? Yeah, lots of people. Yes, and lots of gun guys watch my videos on LinkedIn. This is my. This is my job. <laughs> Patrick, this is my job. Uh, I, I, my if LinkedIn you go look at like my LinkedIn my... profile, it says trigger puller. <laughs> my LinkedIn is that. like my schooling and my <laughs> previous work experience, so I can find another tech job when I get fired. <laughs> no, mine says I shoot guns. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, I said social media, so up on social medias. There you go. Patrick, did you share it on your Twitter? I did. Yeah, so I just want to – anyone who has Twitter, go out there, find the Hank Strange Twitter, retweet it. Kevin, do you have um? Do you have Twitter? Uh, I do. It's the one plat, and I'm pretty sure you can understand this between all the platforms. That's the one I, I man. I'm I'm trying to get better with it. I have it. It's uh, NOC Firearms Training. I'm trying to get better at running Twitter, Instagram. I need some help. Uh, <laughs> Twitter, it's Instagram, awesome, isn't it? Yeah, but first of all, when you post on Instagram, you can automatically post on a bunch of other pages, including Twitter. And I do. Um, and I was I was yelled at by a true 
Twitter, a, with a tweeter. I don't know what the hell you call it, but a was like, twat. So I was just call them say twats. That. If they yell at you, call them twats. <laughs> you're, like, you need to, you're not retweeting. Nobody's going to retweet your stuff if you're not retweeting their stuff. I'm like, I don't understand the rules, man. All right, I will try. I will try. I didn't know I had to retweet the twat. I didn't know. <laughs> Kevin, oh God. don't repeat everything. Final 15 say. right here. That is not a good idea, Kevin, to go out there repeating everything that I say. Oh, I'm just saying, man. Just I don't FYI. Know. I don't know what it's called, but I am trying to get better at it because did I know. You hear, did you hear Babyface just talking about professionalism? I am. I am very much. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, we got a bunch of people that are just joining us now. I want to invite wow. you guys to one, share the link to the shoot for the cure you missed too much so yeah you guys have <laughs> missed, missed a lot you're gonna, go. have to, yeah, you're gonna have to roll back we're not totally done right now so it's not over click the thumbs up button you know share this video and all that kind of stuff but please go look at the shoot for the cure link that we have not only in the description of this video but we put it in the chat um and i could actually i'll go and put that in the chat again I think I think Patrick just put it in the in the chat, but I'll go put it in there again so that we can get that going. And hey, you know, uh, while you're doing that, Hank, can I make another another point? Absolutely. Uh, go ahead. So I appreciate you guys going out there looking to donate to the shooting for the cure. I can't tell you guys how much I love you and appreciate you. You're guys. up to nine hundred and twenty six bucks, my friend. Awesome. You're awesome. approaching a thousand bucks. Can we get this thing to a thousand before we go off the air tonight? Come on. That'd be awesome. Jump on. Be awesome. Make it happen. Make it Jump crank. On. Um, Kevin, what will you do if we, well, a thousand is easy, but let's, it's easy, but Kevin, what will you do here on air if we get to a thousand? Will you sing? Will you do, will you recite Eminem's rap battle or whatever? If we get, if we get to a thousand, I will take the hat off and fling it across the room. <laughs> no, I want the hat burned down. They do. That's, no, that's 2000 tonight. <laughs> no, that's <I> sacrilege. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll take the hat off and I'll, I'll hold this all night, the rest of the night. You hold up Glock. Glock. Yeah, I make Glock it instead of an HK. Yeah. Oh, I carry my revolver once you to twerk. He says, "Will you twerk?" Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> yeah. I have. I, I do have a small. Yeah, but a little twerk. You can do a little twerk. A little twerk. Yeah. I, I now I would I would I would guess to say that if you if a gun guy twerks, he can about stop coming on social media, right? <laughs> no, you might blow up, man. You might be you might be the bomb after that. Yeah, I don't know. I won't take the chance. <laughs> yeah. I know I can't do it because I don't have a booty. So I definitely can't twerk. So there you go. That's my out. <laughs> That's how I stay out of that. What about you, Patrick? Can you twerk? No, oh, hell no. <laughs> Look at my skin. You see how wide I am? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> that doesn't mean I've seen I've seen um, you know, I've seen uh, some white girls out there twerking. <laughs> so Do I look like a white girl. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Not since you put on the beard, my friend. Not right. Since, not since you put on the beard. Okay, okay, we're going to switch over. Okay, um, Armament and Axis says I, I'm bootyless. Yes, that's pretty true. I am bootyless. <laughs> that's absolutely, um, you know, 100% the truth. I got no booty at all, no ass at all. So here, let me talk about this. We were talking about all of this stuff that's going on. So the National Shooting Sports Foundation, if you guys don't know, that's the organization that controls SHOT Show, which is coming up here in a few months in January. Mm -hmm. And this is on the Truth About Guns. If you want to look it up, the Truth About Guns, National Shooting Sports Foundation, the ATF should regulate bump fire stocks. The Bunch National Shoot. I can't believe that. Bugs. The National Shooting Sports Foundation is the firearms industry's lobby group. The Sporting and Arms, the Sporting Arms and Ammunition Manufacturers Institute, SAMI sets the industrial technical standards. The NSSF and SAMI issued the following. So so Wait, this is both from of these. SAMI? Yeah, this is also from SAMI. Wow, that makes this even worse. Um, issued the following statement. Pretty much calling on the ATF to restrict the sale of bump fire stocks under the National Firearms Act. Reading it, I could only conclude that the firearms industry as a whole is happy to have the ATF violate the letter of federal law in a misguided, not to say doomed attempt to prevent future spree killings and or appease gun control advocates. True, you decide, you deride. Um, so there's a whole thing about their thoughts and prayers, okay. Um, we believe the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives should interpret and enforce existing laws and regulations. Um, 
No, hold on. Before that, no. The manufacture, distribution, and sale of automatic firearms and their components has been uh, stringently regulated by federal law since 1934. We believe the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms should interpret and enforce existing laws and regulations. We call upon the ATF to conduct a prompt review and evaluation of aftermarket trigger activation devices, such as bump stocks, to determine whether they are lawful to install and use on a firearm under the National Firearms Act of 1934, or whether it, um, or whether if they have no function or purpose other than to convert a conventional firearm into an automatic firearm, Bunch they are regulated fire. items under the NFA. We urge Congress to allow ATF to complete its review before considering any legislation so that any policy decisions can be informed by the facts an ATF analysis. What the hell? I mean, what, 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 okay, so now we have, okay, so this is everybody, right? So we don't even have a, a, a target to zero in on, pun intended. I mean, it's... It's not everyone. It's not everyone. It's these organizations that are not really, they're not really gun guys. I'm sorry. These really no. are not gun people. Nope. They, I don't think the, the people on the top of the NRA are really gun people. Nope. They, you know, that's bullshit. I can't believe that the NRA president comes out and says that he's against machine guns. He's not a gun guy. You know, and the NRA, they, they're saying that. And at the same time, I've watched NRA shows that they put out on NRA TV where there's machine guns. So that doesn't make any sense. I definitely have shot machine guns. So I am not against machine guns. And I think that's bullshit. And the NRA should know better than that. And of course, when all of that, when, when the ban on machine guns went down, they were complicit in that. So, you know, the, I, and, and I definitely feel like the NSSF are not gun guys. Neither is Sammy and all that. I don't think these are really yeah. gun people, you know, and that's so now, the problem we have. So now how, how do we define gun guy? Right. Because I, you know, I always I'm and I'm just I don't know. It's, it's like, how do we go back to the definition of it? Because maybe there needs to be an alteration of it. Right. Because you would think, you know, just seeing a guy with a shotgun, he might not have an AR, but he's a gun guy. Right. You know, it's I don't know. I guess I guess it's pain in my heart right now because that's it's just not it's not OK. Yeah. I get you know, I'm not sure. Like, so uh, are you being facetious or did you no, are you I'm saying that we should really, definitely. OK. To me, to me, it's really it's 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 and I know we're all tough guys and all that. But to me, if. And I know everything's about absorbing information, things like that, you know, blah, blah, blah. But if anybody, anybody. It doesn't have to even be an organization, any individual that I believe believes in what I believe in. And then I find out later that they're they're not on board like they should be. It, it hurts my feelings. I'm really passionate about this thing. I agree with you. you know, it, it lets me down. It hurts my feelings. It really does. And, and I think it's the reason it's destructive, you know, because we're out there supporting these people. We're pushing them up. I mean, whether you're like a YouTube gun star or whatever it is or you're in the NRA or wherever you are, we're the ones supporting you, pushing you up, you know? And we're giving our money to the NRA and all that, and they're not listening to us. That's what I'm worried about, you know? Um, I was gonna tell you guys that years ago, I've been doing this now between like maybe four and a half, five years, right? Going on five years. Mm -hmm. and years ago, when I went, when I first started this and I went to my first SHOT Show, there was a meeting at SHOT Show with the gun writers, because the gun writers were big at that time, but they were very, they were very curious to know about us YouTube guys, because all of a sudden we were a pain in the ass, like five years ago. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to know a lot about us. So I started talking to some of these gun guys and there was this meeting at SHOT Show with the NRA and these gun writers. And, and I asked one of them what the meeting was about. And he said it was about us YouTube guys. And I said, well, what about us? And, and he told me that it was the NRA wanted to know how to control us. Okay. And a few months after that is how we got NRA TV and you got a bunch of people who are on there. Um, and and here we are now, you know, and the NRA does control some of us, but they don't control all of us. But the problem is, is that we're supporting all of this and we're allowing this to happen. My my retort to him was, why, why do they need to control us? What are we doing wrong? We're gun guys where we support the Second Amendment. You know, we're bringing information and entertainment to people and we're out there fighting for gun rights. You know, instead of trying to figure out how to control us, they should figure out how to work with us, how we can all work together, how we can help each other. So, for example, if the NRA is aware of Republicans that they helped get into office waffling 
or 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 like you know the um you know um that are pro, that are now all of a sudden pro gun control right these guys are defecting and going over to the gun control side if they are aware of that instead of coming out with stupid statements like this and then trying to double and triple and quadruple down on their statements how about come to us and say these are these are our republicans that we know that are going to come out with some form of gun control you guys need to push back against that because we could do it. We could get out there and we could talk to the masses, not just on YouTube, but we've we've all got social media and we can reach out to people and talk to people like within our community, outside of our community. We all have audiences and all of that. We, t together, we're all way bigger than any of these organizations. You know, the problem is we've been supporting them wholeheartedly all this time. And they're the whole time they've just been like rolling around in the limos and flying in the private jets and balling out on the money that we give to them. And they're so high up now that they're thinking above us. I am. Um, I don't know, man. It's it's to me. It's it, it's 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 rather it's it's hurtful. You know, to think that anybody would, uh, and first of all, I never knew about that. Con of course, I wouldn't know, but I never knew about uh, you having a conversation that shot. Um, but I think that working with combined efforts with uh, somebody is always the way to go. And if anybody uh, is, is trying to get guns controlled, um, that's that that's upsetting. I, yeah. I don't I don't know another way to say it. You know what I mean? It, it, it's right. It's really upsetting because it's once and we what we always say to anti gunners is one reason we tell them we can't give you anything is because you'll want everything. Yeah, right. Exactly. And if we give them something, you know, it's where, where, where does it stop? Where, where does it? What do we stop? Because we've already you, given so much. I mean, that's the problem right there. We've given up so much and like all that we've given up. Right. Um, what has that gotten? The world is the world has gotten worse from like back in the 80s or the 70s or the 60s and, right. and we haven't cured anything and we somehow feel oh if we just keep making more laws and if we just keep giving up more of our freedoms that's how we're going to solve this problem and how does that deal with the with the broken human beings that exist in society and the fact that more and more of these broken human beings are coming online you know, it doesn't deal with it. And that's just the truth. And I know that like people have this knee jerk reaction. Oh, we got to make more laws. We're going to fix this by making more laws. No, you're not. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's you cannot litigate this. You can take every single human being on this planet and erase them from from the face of this planet. And the animals that are here are still going to kill each other. The plants, if you get rid of all the animals and it's just the plants, the plants are going to fight each other. <laughs> Speaking of that, did you guys hear? Um, I know Tim did some snippets. Did you guys hear what uh, Feinstein said? Yeah, about... she's, it couldn't be, couldn't have been stopped. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, she admits what we're saying. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You know, right. so they they know this. They know this, right? This is not about actually doing anything about stopping something else happening. Because the reality here is that they can't do anything about it. What this is about is that we cannot have these things. The general public, the regular people can't have this. This is why the NRA is not aware of it. You know, this is why they're not thinking about it because these guys on top, they have access to this. Why, you know, these all these things that exist, including the slide fire stock, I'm not aware of how many they've sold. I'm gonna assume there's like more than a million. If it wasn't, it is now. Yeah. So it, wh why do these things sell? I don't like them, but someone likes them. Why do the triggers sell? Because someone out there wants to buy it's a these dumb things. fun toy. Absolutely. And why shouldn't we have fun? Why why can't we enjoy this? Why can't we enjoy guns like any like someone can enjoy cars? There's no limit on cars. No one's locking cars in at 55 miles an hour and doing. But you know what? One day they will. And so if you're a car guy and you think, well, I don't care about this gun thing and I'm okay with this, you're going to find that happening to you one day that they're going to, you're going to get locked in and limited with that. If you're a plain guy, or if you're this thing or that thing, the whole point of the, of, of these people is to control the masses and keep us in lockdown. And all we're trying to do here is enjoy this thing, you know, that we believe in. We believe in guns and we want to enjoy it. We want to modify our guns and there's nothing wrong with that. 
you know? And the thing, the reason why I was talking to you about Eminem in the beginning is because I remember that when people try to come out and stop guys like Eminem or NWA that Dr. Dre is part of, or the two live crew and all that kind of stuff, you know, it was all about freedom of speech, right? And freedom of speech doesn't mean that, oh, well, back when we said that we'll have freedom of speech, there was no rappers talking about bitches and hoes. And so now we've got to stop this, right? It's the same thing with the Second Amendment, right? You, but back then, there were no modified triggers or whatever. That has nothing to do with it. We still have that same right, you know, and it says it should not be infringed. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I mean, it's 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 sad for me to think that anybody, anybody who would say that they support freedom in any shape, form, or fashion will report restricting it. I don't. Yeah. Like there's because machine guns are the true definite. A machine gun is difficult to. I think we all know that. If you're not an SOT, I mean, you're you're just not. People aren't just walking around with machine guns for one. Yeah. Exactly. Um. For two, if you are in, if you if you do, and what they fail to realize is most guys that own machine guns hate to shoot them. We, I love to shoot them because I don't own them. But damn, the amount of money it costs to shoot them, too right? Expensive. You know, they're expensive. You know, just an ammo. I mean, there goes thirty bucks, right? You yeah. Know? The other day when we did the video with the Chris Vector, the forty-five, ask Patrick. There was like a literally a fight before the video about the ammo. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's expensive. I shoot machine, yeah. machine guns all the time, and I'm just like crying at the money you know yeah. it's it's ridiculous and bump fire stocks and this is where this is kind of the general point where i hop down on all gun guys i'm not afraid and i i know people of course with the nra and i can't wait to have some some conversations but even with gun guys this is what happens when we decide that and i know we, we're all, i know it's all in fun banter don't get me wrong when i say this but like i come on teasing about hk but look clearly there's a glock in my hand there's a black rain ordinance rifle right here you know, it's it doesn't matter what you like or what you support. So there are a lot of people saying, well, bump fire suck anyway. Do whatever you want to do with them. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, exactly. You can't allow that. Nope. You know, if you didn't like a bump fire before, you need to love them today. Because if you if we if we break support because this thing is something you would never be interested in, well, guess what? Anti gunners aren't interested in anything you have. So once they they see a weakness, they are going to attack it. So for uh, here's a challenge here's a challenge for all the viewers how about for the next week give it a solid week don't say anything negative about anything gun any gun item widget wadget gun product anything say nothing bad about it nothing because everything that we say now is going to be used in this fight try not to say anything bad about it you you normally hate this and this gun company because of their product itself not their political stance but just a product Keep that to yourself for right now, because right now is not the time to have the debate because it seems trivial to you, but people are going to use whatever they can use against us to turn us against each other in a weakness. Mm -hmm. So try to only speak positive words. Uh, if it's if it's about a gun product, you hate this thing because it jams up every time or you hate this lube because it, it locks your gun up. Don't talk about it right now. Just don't. It's, it's, it's just not a good time. Yeah, I think what we need to do right now is talk about these issues. And I'm not trying to, like, separate myself from the people out there that are, you know, because we have some people within our community that are, you know, on the side of some of this stuff going on. Or at least in the beginning, they were supportive of it. I think right now they're changing their tune a little bit. Um, and, and it's not that I even want to talk negatively about them. I just think one of the things, one of the mistakes we make is for the sake of being positive. And, and I, you know, I agree with what you're saying about, like, leave all the other stuff alone and, and, and deal with this. For the sake of being positive, we let other people run right over us, you know, and therefore we have no voice because we're relying. We think somehow these people are going to stand up for us. And what they do is enable a lot of this has been enabled. That's what I'm saying to you. The reason why you have the NSSF and all and all these other Sammy, all these other groups coming out now and saying it because the NRA enabled it. Uh, Trump opened the door to you know to this thing. The NRA was like, "Hey, let me hold that door wide open for you." And now everyone's flooding through it, you know. And and now the and the media, of course, is going to fan the fan the flames and push that up. And polls and all that kind of stuff are signaling that Americans want some kind of gun control right now, and on and on. And everyone thinks that all this is going to do is take away, you know, this silly uh, slide fire thing that no one likes. And that's that is not what it's going to do. It's not. They're gonna they're gonna use the fact that oh, 
you guys don't agree on this thing. Well, let's see where else we can divide you, right? We already got some of your politicians. Oh, we, we see your, your, the kink in your armor here. It is going to be used against us. And you know what the funny thing is? It, it's amazing how it restricts and shuts stuff down. Because let's say they actually succeed, which it will be a nightmare, right? Let's say they succeed in the next 10 years. We can't get on here and, and show an AR because you have to have it deep in your basement. You can't be seen with it or a modified trigger or something like that or a bump stock or whatever. Well, you know what? The next thing they're coming out of is our freedom of speech. There will be no more uh, freedom podcasts. Who, there, there won't. Because next, I'm going to shut you down there. There well, will be. Also, no if that thing succeeds, we're all going to be criminals. So whether you have it in your basement or wherever you have oh, yeah, it, yeah, but I'm saying you can't show it now. You have to hide it. Like you're a criminal, but you're like hiding your. Forget dope. hide it. They can walk into any house that they know there's a gun guy in in America, and he's got a modified gun, you know, rifle in there. This thing wasn't necessarily talking about pistols, but they can walk into anyone's home, and if I've got it, you've got it, everyone's got it. Yep, that's why I brought these out. Like. You know, and that, that has an American flag on it, by the way, and that's what we should be really supporting. But these little drop in apex triggers, gone. You can't you can't put them in your Glock. Gone. All right. It, yeah. It's ridiculous. Well, at this point, that doesn't extend out to pistols, but it, it's rifles the way they have it written. But trust me, it will extend to a lot of things and it's going to extend to magazines. They're not going to give up this opportunity to put stuff in there. Um, I know we've been going over two hours so we can keep talking on this. Um, Definitely, I think we need to wrap this up and come back. We've got, you know, we can keep talking about this over the next few days. Um, what I wanted to do was remind you guys once again of the of the the author G. Michael Hopf and Day of Reckoning. So this is a Marine, you know, author of the New World series. Uh, it's an apocalyptic thriller and it's got there's a big sale going on on Amazon right now it's 99 cents on Kindle and 12.99 on paperback Lola has a link in the description we're also trying to get the author to come on the show here because he is a gun guy he puts realistic gun stuff in his stories and we definitely want to support him so I just want to uh, once again remind you guys of that and then I'm gonna let um, let everyone uh, you know pitch their things once more babyface what you got to pitch my friend uh, nothing right now you better have some videos. We haven't done anything in a while. We've been too busy. This, this yeah, month has been crazy. Yeah, we need to get some videos. You, you are on Twitter now, so go find Babyface on Twitter. Yeah, not, the real Babyface P. Real Babyface P. Real, real. Not the, but real. Real Babyface P. Real. <laughs> I think that guy's going to start a, a rap battle you. with you. <laughs> yeah, you're going to you're going to hear words from that dude. So, yeah, check out that. But also B Babyface has a channel. He has videos on there on YouTube. So check it out. Help support him. He's got some good stuff on there. I know the numbers are going up, right? Very slowly, but, you know, steady growth is always good. Absolutely. We just need to get you to put some more videos in there. <laughs> exactly. exactly right. <laughs> yeah, I think I've got some things that we can make that happen. Okay, so Kevin, what you got going on? Uh, first, I want to thank you guys for going to the uh, GoFundMe. Um, you know, and it's in here. It'll be in here. So please keep doing what you do. I appreciate you. Um, so um, the ways to follow me are uh, on YouTube is uh, NOC Firearms Channel. On um, uh, Instagram, it's uh, at NOC Firearms uh, Training, and on Facebook, it's uh, NOC Firearms Training, or you can just look me up, uh, Kevin Dixie. And I uh, want to say that we have a lot coming out, a lot of more work with Proper, so I want to thank Proper for even helping me out um, with, a, with a ton of stuff, and we'll talk about them more. Um, videos and content and things of that nature. I am going to start getting a lot more content out for you guys. I know Instagram and Facebook, I'm always on it. Uh, there's a Twitter, YouTube, and I also have a Patreon now. So it's a page, uh, NOC Firearms on Patreon. So if you in cool. your heart, uh, want to go help out with that, um, or it's patreon.com backslash NOC Firearms. Um, so I want to um, get a lot of uh, get a lot of things out. I'm going to use that account to try to, I'm trying to bring in help. Between doing all the community events I do and running around doing all these videos and talking to people, I've reached a point to where I need help. So I'm trying to find somebody to help me manage uh, a couple of social media sites so I can spend more time getting content out. So I'm going to use Patreon even try to help with that. So that's what I got going on. But uh, I took a stab at humor. I can't wait to put that video out. Um, uh -oh. See how that goes. Uh, and doing humor. Yeah, I did a little oh, humor, boy. you know. Showed, I call it, I call that my softer side of a gun guy. You know, gun guys just have oh, okay. a good fun time. You know, let's stab it. Yeah. You know, it'll be fun, man. So, so this is coming up on your YouTube channel soon, right? Uh, yeah, I should have the, the humor video. As soon as it's, I'm done with this breast cancer event, uh, I'll be done with that. Oh, and the weekend following, 
I will probably go live, but um, we are also, I'm actually helping sponsor this event. Um, we're doing it, it's called Safe House. It's for a women bat battered shelter. And I would have chimed in early and said something about it when Hank said something about hitting women, but he was <laughs> hitting everything. So I couldn't get, uh, well. couldn't get a word in. Um, but <laughs> Project Safe House is, um, is just that. It's a, it's a haven for women that are uh, running from abusive relationships. Uh, so we are going in and we're stepping in. And so is it a no NFL zone? Not tank, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It is, get at least. it is definitely a no put your hands on women's zone. So I had, to, I had to at least get one of those in. Is anyone from the NFL donating money? Because they, their asses need to. You know, I've, I've had, I've, I can actually say I've had NFL players in previous events donate uh, money to things I've done. Yes. I, okay, I, cool. All right. Um, but the, the, it's going to be great. So what we're doing for that event is we're actually giving the the staff of the facility um, free firearms training and self defense training. So if a mm -hmm. crazy boyfriend kicks it in, they can, you know, they can do what they got to do to protect the women. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Um, Rod Mills wants to know what happened to my drone and drone coverage. Uh, I sold my drone to upgrade it. There's a whole bunch of different drones coming out, so I haven't like settled on what drone I'm getting. Plus, there's a lot of stupid drone laws out there for a lot of places. So other than using it on the hacienda, you know, there's just like so many, just so much stupid nonsense, right? <laughs> With drones that for me, uh, I'm not like super motivated to get it done, but I am still looking at drones. So there you go. Okay. Um, I want to thank everyone that's hanging out in the chat, men hanging with us. We still have a lot of people looking at this right now, listening, chatting, asking questions and all that kind of good stuff. So thank you guys for doing that. Um, I want to thank Babyface P and of course, Kevin Dixie for coming on the show. Thank you guys. No problem. These are good guys to come on the show and listen to me oh. rant. You know, <laughs> Kevin, you know, hopefully uh -huh. somebody, I, I will pay one of your children to steal all your HK paraphernalia out of your <laughs> house. on fire. Yeah. Not, <laughs> and look, Donovan's trying, he's trying to save up for a, a new PlayStation 4, so I'm definitely not going to let him find out you said it. Oh, so. yeah. So Donovan, get in touch with me. If you can disappear with all that paraphernalia, I will hook you up. So they, <laughs> there you go. So I want to thank you guys for coming on. Um, I want to thank all the people that sponsor the channel. That would be Safety Harbor Firearms. Walter is out at the Knob Creek shoot right now. He headed out there. Hopefully he got out there safe or he will be getting there uh, by tomorrow. Um, if you guys are in that area, go check out the Knob Creek shoot and hang out with Walter and report back to us. We want to know what Walter is up to out there. Um, also, one of the people that sponsors us is Rand CLP as well as Andrew's Custom Leather. And of course, Big Daddy Guns right there. Right. See Big Daddy Guns? That's how we get the studio access and all that cool stuff. Um, also, I want to thank everyone that supports us on Patreon. We are Patreon slash Hank Strange. And as Kevin mentioned, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on right now. We really need your support. So definitely go out there. Yours is, um, is it Knock Firearm Training, NOC? Uh, I forgot for already. Your right, Patreon. You Patreon is a patreon.com black slash NOC firearms. Okay, all the okay, just Patreon slash NOC firearms. Yes. There you go. Awesome. Thank you. You know, I know you're a little old school. I'm older than you. No, you don't no, need no. the back forward slash flip My it, bad. triple double, slap it, rip it, <laughs> tear it down. <laughs> okay. I'm just teasing you. I'm just teasing you. All right. So I want to thank everyone. Like I said, thank the, the folks on Patreon for supporting us. It's Patreon slash Hank Strange, Patreon slash NLC Firearms. There you go. And um, we're out of here. Keep up the fight, my friends. Keep up the fight. Don't give up. Okay. Keep pushing. Keep pushing back. Make those calls. Make those emails. Get on those people's social media. We're out of here. Peace. Peace, guys.